The Indianapolis Colts shockingly extended Jonathan Taylor after it seemed like he was almost guaranteed to be traded. So this team now again looks like one of the up and coming teams in the NFL with a lot of good young players on their roster. So I thought this was a better time than ever with a team that has a lot of potential to do a 10 year rebuild because y'all absolutely seem to love the last one. Which speaking of that, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to drop a like. For this special 10-year rebuild, let's see if we can get to 1,500 likes, and if we can hit that, I have something special planned. And I know it sounds stupid, but it really does help out the channel, so be sure to drop a like. And also, we are very, very close to 20,000 subscribers. Be sure to subscribe if you like Madden Rebuilds, because that is literally all I do. And once we hit 20k, I have another special video planned. And let me know any fun rebuild ideas you all have down below it can be a team to do or it can be like a special type of rebuild i've been doing a ton of those lately and if i pick your comment i'll give you a shout out and all that good stuff and very last thing be sure to turn on notifications if you want to make sure you never miss a video and be one of the first people to ever see these videos but enough plugging and let's get into this long rebuild now the biggest part of this rebuild i would say is going to be how well we can develop anthony richardson obviously Obviously an insane athlete, maybe the best athlete of all time at the quarterback position, pairing his really good speed, he's probably even faster than his speed in the game in real life, but pairing his speed with his amazing throw power, his arm talent, he just makes a crazy athlete at QB. And the top three receivers here are all young, Michael Pittman a little older, but still only like 25 I think, yeah. Bernard Raymond and Quentin Nelson are still young, well relatively young at least. And we'll see if we can develop Jelani Woods. He has star dev in this game. I do like him a lot in real life. I think he's injured right now. And oh yeah, obviously the main point of this rebuild, I guess, Jonathan Taylor. We'll have to see how well we can develop him throughout the 10 years. Obviously, I'm assuming he's going to retire before the very end of this, but still only 24 here. And then the defense is going to need some work, I would say. Really? I don't know if anyone here is going to be still here at the end of the rebuild, maybe. Maybe, like Julius Brents, he's only 23, but that's a big maybe. If he'll even develop, we'll have to see. So this defense definitely is gonna need some work. But that's enough talking about the rebuild. Let's actually get into this. So get a drink, get a snack, get whatever, because this is gonna be a long one. And let's get to the midseason point of year number one. Okay, well, that is an amazing start to the rebuild as we are four and three. I kind of thought we would suck this year, I'm not gonna lie, but... Obviously, the year isn't over yet, but we are 4-3 and three at the midseason. And our defense is amazing. Fourth in the NFL. That doesn't really make sense because, <laughs> you know, we have a 79 overall defense, but I guess we'll take it. Good amount of upgrades here, too. A couple for Anthony Richardson. But we also have some re-signings to worry about year one. Definitely some important players here. The greatest player of all time, Gardner Minshew, is here. I feel like I have mentioned him every single rebuild for the past like five I've done. He's just been showing up a lot for some reason. <laughs> but Michael Pittman is the big one here, I guess. I mean, Grover Stewart is a higher overall, but we already have another good defensive tackle and he's a little older, but he's still good. But Michael Pittman, we will just offer him this to start out. It's probably not going to get accepted, but we might as well try four years, 53 mil. And he does take it. Okay, that's why I tried it. Kenny Moore's good. He's really not that expensive either. We'll offer him two years, 16 mil. That's a pretty good deal. He is 28, but I'm fine with it. And then Grover Stewart, that's kind of a lot of money. Um, I don't know if I want to do that. He's doing pretty well to start the year out, though. We'll see at the end of the year if we want to re-sign him. And then Julian Blackman is really cheap, three years, 16 mil. I think he had a really good, like, rookie year and hasn't really been the same since. Kind of just what happened with Malik Hooker, too, but at least Malik Hooker's been good for the Cowboys recently. And then Quiddy Pay will have a fifth-year option for him. That's really cheap. I'm surprised it's that cheap. We'll definitely pick that up when we actually can. But I think that's everybody we're going to bring back here. So let's get to the end of the season and we'll see how this team does in year one. Okay, I <laughs> I did not see that coming. In year one, we make the playoffs going 10 and 7. I don't think this is a good enough team to be a playoff team, but we'll take it. What is this team's record in real life? I, I know most teams record right now, but for some reason, I, I just can't think of the Colts. Are 
are they like one in three no they're two and two so i mean they're doing all right oh yeah they beat the ravens and texans those are two pretty good wins those those aren't bad teams at all i forgot my king gardner Minshew came in and beat the ravens that was the best day of my life but i think our season is coming to an end in the wild card here as we're going to be taking on the chiefs but let's check out our season stats from the year Ooh, anthony richardson was straight up like not good only 2900 passing yards in a 17 game season that's insane 19 touchdowns isn't very good either 16 picks is a lot at least he added a little bit in the run game 444 yards four touchdowns four yards per carry i guess four is his lucky number i think he was the fourth overall pick that's just his lucky number what can i say but jonathan taylor 1700 yards 5.6 per carry 16 touchdowns looking like 2021 jonathan taylor i think that's when he had his massive year but in the receiving side of things uh it wasn't great <laughs> Josh Downs was our leading receiver with only 750 yards. At least he had 10 touchdowns, but that was the most for any receiver by a lot on our team. We might need a new offensive playbook. This just doesn't look very fun. <laughs> I mean, at least Taylor did well, but uh, I don't know. And the blocking was fine. I mean, this would be good if we didn't only pass like 400 and. 21 times. Wish we passed one less time because I'm very mature. But Zare Franklin led the team with 142 tackles, tackles for loss, 23 from pay, 18 for Stewart. We had a lot of tackles for loss. Our defense was on the field a lot, it looks like. Yet we still got hardly any sacks. Eight for Stewart, seven and a half for Buckner, only five and a half for Quiddy Pay. And uh, Sam Sinebukam, as a full time starter, got zero sacks. How many did he have in real life last year? I mean, he had five, but that was in a lot less snaps I would guess damn he's really been in the league that long I guess he has but yeah I don't think he should be getting zero sacks here and then interceptions five for Kenny Moore three for Franklin Leonard and Blackman two for Cross and Brents and then one for speed a lot of interceptions at least but MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes I feel like it's always these same 10 players up here which is fair I mean they're all good QBs but like why <laughs> at least it's not Dak winning it this year AFC offensive player of the year goes to Lamar Jackson, Jonathan Taylor at number four will take that. Defensive player of the year goes to Max Crosby. Zare Franklin does come in at number seven. I guess he was really good. Maybe he can get a star dev. We'll see. Tyree Wilson up there as a rookie. Uh, that's not exactly what he's doing in real life, but EA moment. And Josh Downs wins offensive rookie of the year. I'm not gonna lie. I thought that was Anthony Richardson. And where from where I'm sitting, their face skin looks similar ish i sit really far away when i do these videos for some reason <laughs> but we'll take an offensive rookie of the year no matter who it is i was thinking it could be downs but i didn't think he had enough yards but apparently he did Ooh, cj stroud must have been really bad because anthony richardson was kind of bad and he still beat cj stroud but defensive rookie of the year of course goes to tyree wilson julius brents at number two it would have been nice to win both of those but unfortunately not but at least we win offensive rookie of the year but we have a first of many scenario here before we see if we uh can miraculously beat the chiefs but i can almost guarantee we're gonna lose but we will go play it cool y'all know me we don't deserve to win this game they definitely have the better team but i guess we'll see what happens okay of course we win that game why wouldn't we we win 24 to 21 <laughs> I, I don't even want to win right now i want to win when we have a good team and we actually deserve it this just furthers my point is that the term for further proves my point i think that's what i was going for that the worst team you have the best better you do for some reason. I don't know why, but that's what it feels like. But give us those sweet and juicy staff points, please and thank you. And we have a hot opponent scenario for the Cincinnati Bengals here. We will go be confident, y'all know me. And let's see if we can somehow take down the Bengals too. I hope not, but we'll see. Okay, well, I don't know if we deserve to get smoked like that after beating the Chiefs, but I guess that's definitely fair. They are a much better team at this point. But let's try to change the that in the off season and hopefully become close to a close to as good of a team pretty soon i don't think we're gonna go crazy in free agency yet but we might we'll see depends on who's available but in the super bowl the jets beat the panthers 24 to 14 yeah i don't i don't know about that one in real life i feel like the panthers are almost the new cowboys in this game not new because like they've been really broken for a couple years now but the 
Panthers are just... At least the Cowboys have, like, a good roster that makes them do well, but I don't get why the Panthers are good in this game. I have no idea. Ooh, but we have a couple upgrades here for Josh Downs. Oh, yeah, Jonathan Taylor also probably won best running back. Maybe had the most rushing yards in the NFL. I don't know. But I guess we'll go with a couple playmaker upgrades for Josh Downs here. Damn, a lot there. And he, of course, does have superstar dev now, so that's pretty huge. We'll take that. And let me see, did Taylor win, uh, yeah, best running back? And he got X Factor. I figured he would eventually, but I didn't think he would get it literally year one. But we'll take it. But now for the rest of the players that we have to re-sign, I do want Grover Stewart back. I do. I wonder if we can get him back on a one year. One year, 20.6 mil. I don't know if he would want a one year, but we might as well try it. And he does. Okay, huge. Because I know he's going to regress after the year. I don't want to commit to more than one year. So we'll take that. And then, I mean, yeah, it's just a bunch of backups for the rest of these guys. I guess we'll pick up the fifth year for Quiddy Pay. It's only 11 mil. I mean, I would do some unspeakable things for $11 million in real life, but, you know, for an NFL organization, $11 million ain't shit. But we actually don't have the most cap in the world. We only have, I guess, 21 mil. I do want my King Gardner Minshew back, but we... You know what? If he takes this three years, 11 mil, I'm fine with it. Okay, beautiful. He'll be here for another three years. Was that a little pointless? Definitely, but I gotta keep my King around. But let's get into free agency, and hopefully there are some good players. I don't even know who, what position I would want to go for, though. Damn, DeForest Buckner is making a lot of money. <laughs> he was really good for us last year, though, so we're not going to, like, trade him away or anything. We might restructure some contracts here, though. Let me see what I can do. Well, first, I should check if there's even anybody good in free agency. Um, yeah, but it's mostly older players here at the top. There isn't really anybody here that I'm, like, dying to get, necessarily. Gabe Davis would be kind of fun, but that would be a really one-dimensional top two with Gabe Davis and Michael Pittman. Not much speed there. Not that that really matters for Madden, but still. We might do that, but I'll look through here real quick and we'll see what we can come up with. Okay, well, I'm only gonna go for a couple players here. It's gonna be Jeremy Chin and Gabe Davis. We... I know we made the playoffs, but I might already switch the offensive playbook. We'll see. Because if we're gonna get Gabe Davis, we're probably gonna need to go more pass-heavy because we'll have three, like, at least good enough receivers and we won't even be using them so I definitely want to do that and then we're also going to go for Jeremy Chin I'll move him to free safety obviously we're not going to have two nickel corners with Kenny Moore and Jeremy Chin so yeah we'll move Jeremy Chin back to free safety and we'll see how that goes I actually want to check real quick did we get any other dev ups Ooh, okay we I was that's why I checked I wanted to see if we got any at safety Julian Blackman got superstar and Nick Cross got star that almost makes me want to not go for Jeremy Chin and maybe just try to develop him. But at a 72, I don't know how much Nick Cross is going to develop. I guess we'll see. And then Shaquille Leonard went up to Superstar. Zare Franklin up to Star. Grover Stewart up to Superstar, obviously. We saw that. And on offense... None that we haven't already seen. Oh yeah, wait, there was one more player I wanted to go for. Oh no, we couldn't get him because there was a team super interested. I wanted to go for Jonathan Grenard because Samson Ebukam was awful, <laughs> but the Texans were super interested and I couldn't compete. So we will not go for Jeremy Chin and it's going to be a very light free agent class, literally just Gabe Davis. But let's see if we can get him. We can't, at least to begin with. And now it looks like he does sign. So not a very diverse receiving core, but at least we add another good player to it. So now with Michael Pittman, Gabe Davis, and Josh Downs, that's a pretty good top three, not to mention we have Alec Pierce as the number four. So I'm feeling good about that. I'm feeling good about this roster in general. Really, I would say our only glaring needs are like edge and then a third corner. The rest of our roster, even if they aren't great overalls, they at least played well, like Zare Franklin, Nick Cross. And then on offense, we might replace Will Fries, but he did fine. Like, I'm feeling pretty good. Anthony Richards and obviously struggled, but I'm hoping he can play better as the years go on. We'll just have to see. But with that, let's get to the draft and let's see what we can do. But in the draft, the Bears have the number one pick. Definitely some interesting teams up here in the top six, though. But we don't pick until number 26, which obviously is kind of rough. I almost wish we didn't even make the playoffs at all, because now the main players I wanted are unfortunately gone. You hate to see it. This guy actually looks really good right here, though. Kendrick Simpson. 
Samson. Oh, he's not very strong. Never mind. But he has good power moves. That's about it, though. Good tackling, I guess. But we need a speed rusher. We already have Quiddy Pay as a power guy. I might, end up, I might end up taking Jonathan Barner and Greg McFarlane later in the draft. We'll see. Because they both look at least decent. And this Rashad Ferguson guy actually looks pretty good at tackle. We would obviously move him into guard. 36 reps at the combine. Good ratings. We might think about him here. I think either him or Xavier Rogers, a corner out of Clemson. He doesn't have very good play rec, but really good man coverage, good press. I'm guessing at least, I mean, obviously at least a C for man or zone coverage. We might go with him. He's gonna have normal dev, but he looks good. So let's take him here. Xavier Rogers out of Clemson. Okay, never mind. All I need to do is say that, that a player is gonna have normal dev and they just won't to prove me wrong, to make me look like an idiot. But I'll take it because we got a corner with hidden dev. Who's, who's the idiot now, EA? <laughs> really well-rounded, like, speed and agility ratings, all an 89 to a 91. Or, well, I guess jumping isn't really agility, but it's like athleticism. You know what I mean. He looks really good, so we'll take it. And now, let's go with the linebacker that looked really good in Jermaine Cadet. A straight-up first-round talent. Really good speed. Well, good speed, at least. Good enough strength. Great-looking ratings. A lot of A's across the board. Let's go with Jermaine Cadet out of Virginia. Of course, hidden dev, good speed, good excel. I don't even know how much playing time he's gonna get immediately, but if we see a really good player available, we might as well take the really good player. You know what I mean? And with the last pick I'm gonna take here, I don't even know if this guy's any good, but Greg McFarland, he doesn't look that great. B play rec, B finesse moves. I mean, I guess there's a chance he could have a dev trait, maybe. He's already 23 though. I I don't know. There There isn't really much else for us to do with this pick anyways. I mean, we could go with a lineman, but this was like our biggest problem, arguably. Oh, this guy actually might be decent. His play rec sucks though. Yeah, let's just go with Greg McFarland out of USF. Normal dev, only 78 speed for a speed rusher. He is strong though. I don't know if he's any good, but I guess we'll see. So let's get to the end of the draft and let's see what kind of players we ended up with. I at least feel pretty good about the first two. Okay, well, here's how we did in the draft. Clearly, like I expected, our first two picks were much better than the rest of the draft. Xavier Rogers was a 77 overall, really good man coverage, good press, good enough zone too. I mean, that's fine. 74. We'll take that. Will immediately be our number two corner over Julius Brents. Or well, I guess Rogers will technically be the number one corner. Brents will be the number two and then Kenny Moore will be in the slot. So that'll work. So I guess he's immediately our number one corner. And then Jermaine Cadet, 76 overall. That's about what I thought he would be. He looks very good. I don't want to play him over Zaire Franklin, though. Zaire Franklin was really good. I don't know. It kind of does make more sense to play Cadet, though. Already at a 76 at only 22 years old. We'll see what we want to do there. And then I don't want to talk about the rest of this draft, so we're not going to. <laughs> I didn't take most of these picks. I think the last pick I took was Jack Sharp, but that wasn't even a good pick anyways. So let's get into your number two of the rebuild. Um, <laughs> I think I'm bad luck because literally the second day of me recording this, Anthony Richardson had a really bad looking shoulder injury. Um, <laughs> I am terribly sorry, Colts fans. I'm just like a master jinxer, I guess. That's weird phrasing, but you know what I mean? Like anytime I either call someone good or bad, they end up being the opposite immediately after, or they get injured, or <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> Maybe I should just stop talking about NFL players in general and just be silent the whole time I do these. I don't know. But here's a look at the team heading into year number two of the rebuild. No changes on offense except for Gabe Davis, obviously. Everything else is the same. Just developed a little bit, obviously. And then the defense is also mostly the same, but we do have Xavier Rogers and Jermaine Cadet. I always struggle so bad with generated player names. But we actually look like a good team now, up to an 82 overall. Obviously, this team has a lot of potential. A lot of this team is really young. So hopefully we can get a lot of development throughout the year. But with that, let's get to the midseason point of year two, and let's see if we can make another playoff run. Okay, well, we are somehow worse at the midseason point of year two. We, I guess we're not much worse, but we are four and three. The Jags are five and one, despite having a worse roster than us. Certified EA moment. I guess we're not much worse, but they are much better. That's a confusing sentence out of context, but damn, two overall upgrade for Josh Downs there. We'll take it. But I actually kind of want to be bad this year. Maybe that's weird, but I want a chance to get like a top level 
level pass rusher. Nah, but watch Samson Ebukam just be a stud this year. I wouldn't be surprised, but you know, it would be nice to have a high pick to get just a top level player in general. But we of course have some re-signings to make here. Who is it gonna be? Both of our defensive tackles in DeForest Buckner and Grover Stewart. Who's doing better this year? That's the big question. Cause I don't know if I wanna pay both. Buckner is seven tackles for loss in two and a half sacks. Grover Stewart has only six tackles for loss and a sack and a half. I guess we'll try to re-sign DeForest Buckner, two years, 44 mil, and he does re-sign. And other than him, I guess we'll bring Ryan Kelly back. Kelly back, he's been really good this year in real life. We'll offer him, I guess one year, 10 mil, that's pretty cheap, we'll take it. And then it's mostly just backups or like lower level starters like Will Fries. Well, actually, how how is Will Fries doing this year? Two sacks allowed, that's not bad at all for a right guard. I mean, it's only like halfway through the year, less than half, so we'll see how he finishes, but we could bring him back. But Zare Franklin is already 28 years old and he's not interested. He was obviously really good last year, but we kind of replaced him, unfortunately. So we'll offer him this. Oh, that's a long contract for a 28 year old. How about two years, nine mil? And he doesn't take it. Okay, we'll see. Maybe if he's more interested at the end of the year, but speaking of the end of the year, let's get there. And hopefully we either make the playoffs or really suck. We'll see. I'm cool with either. Okay, well, that's exactly what I didn't want to happen. We finish eight and nine and miss the playoffs. So we weren't bad enough to get a really good pick and we weren't good enough to make the playoffs. That is exactly where I did not want to be. And unfortunately we beat the Titans in week 17 or week 18 too. I'm still stuck in the past with the 17 week schedule. I'm stuck in the fog, but let's check out how the team did this year. Anthony Richardson was a little better, 3,500 yards, 22 touchdowns. That's still not a great amount and still a lot of picks with 14, but it was better than last year at least. Jonathan Taylor with 1,700 yards, 5.2 per carry, 13 touchdowns. Anthony Richardson, less rushing than last year, but still fine. Should we switch to like a Ravens type offense or something? Because I feel like Lamar still has good passing stats there and he gets, he gets a good amount of rushing yards. I almost feel like that wouldn't be the worst. We will think about that. I was going to change it this year, but honestly, I kind of forgot to. But Michael Pittman was our leading receiver with only 861 yards. Not great numbers there overall. The blocking was also not that good considering we didn't pass that much. I mean, only 25 sacks taken is really good, obviously, but I guess Madden just credits linemen more harshly with sacks in this game than they do in real life. I don't know. And Jermaine Cadet led the team with 126 tackles. I said Cadet really weird. Probably will be up there for defensive rookie of the year. We'll see. And then tackles for loss, 19 for Ebu Com led the team 17 for Buckner or 16 for pay but sacks seven for Buckner four for Stewart two and a half for Ebu Com and two for pay that's stupid I did this in the last rebuild I'm gonna do it again I don't care the last time I used quitty pay I gave him traits and I'm gonna do it again because that is a stupid low amount for like an actual decent player and then interceptions three for Nick Cross two for Kenny Moore and then one for a few players definitely down there in terms of interceptions but MVP again goes to Patrick Mahomes I'm not gonna complain about him winning it every year because at least that's realistic Baker Mayfield now on the Vikings where did Kirk go then I don't know but offensive player of the year also goes to Patrick Mahomes he must have been dominant Jonathan Taylor at number three I wish he could win some of them but unfortunately not yet at least defensive player of the year goes to Khalil Mack I mean he just had a big game in real life but that's the first big game he's had in like like four years, it feels like. No Colts up there. Shocking, I know. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Hugh Carrington for the Patriots. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Rashad Hobson on the Jaguars. Jermaine Cadet at number two, unfortunately. Xavier Rogers at number five. So no Defensive Rookie of the Year. That was like worst case scenario for a season, honestly. I mean, at least we had some players do well, but we finish exactly where we didn't want to. We get barely beat out of every award pretty much. That's tough. Oh, never mind. I'll stop complaining. Jermaine Cadet has Superstar X Factor. Okay, I'll, I'll shut up. That'll shut me up real quick. Um, we will definitely take that. But now let's get into the off season and we'll see if we need to bring anybody else back, but more than likely we'll just get straight into free agency. But in the Super Bowl, I guess it's the Wild West Super Bowl, the, or whatever you want to call it. The Chiefs beat the Cowboys 35 to 28. I've felt 
pretty Cowboys free for this entire rebuild, but they do show up in the Super Bowl here. But they do lose it, unfortunately for them. But thankfully for me, I don't even like hate the Cowboys in real life. I think they're a little over hated, but in Madden, I just I get sick of them real quick. But for the rest of the players that we have to resign, we are gonna let Grover Stewart go, unfortunately. And I think all of these guys we're gonna end up letting go. We just don't really have much of a need for any of them. They're either like easily replaceable or just backups. So let's get into the offseason and hopefully we can add some good players, but free agency might be light this year. We'll see. And no, it definitely isn't. There are some interesting players here. Amon Ross St. Brown is the main one I'm looking at, but we're already paying quite a few receivers. So I don't know. Or well, we're paying two and then we have Josh Downs, but it's not like we're paying Gabe Davis much. We could just move off of him immediately. <laughs> that would be kind of weird, but we could do it. If we did that though, we would have to switch to a more pass heavy offense. And then Samson Ebukam, we are gonna let go. I wonder if we could get any trade value for him. I mean, he's not the worst in terms of overall, just he plays terribly. So, I mean, he at least had a lot of tackles for loss, but that's all he did and that's the problem. <laughs> there isn't really anyone that can afford him or that would probably want him if they can afford him. So we'll just cut him and free up a little bit of cap. Oh, Shaquille Leonard is expensive. He does have X factor now, but he's very expensive. But yeah, I think A, we're gonna restructure some players here and B, we are gonna switch our offensive playbook. Should we just go with the good old fashioned Chiefs offense? We could. Either that or maybe the Bengals. Let's see. All right, we'll see how that works. I'm leaving the scheme the same, so we'll see what happens there. People tell me that it actually does matter, but a lot of the time, even if I do match him, it still sucks. So I, I don't know. I just mean with like any playbook in general, if I match the scheme with the offensive like playbook, it still sucks, sometimes at least. But it looks like Nick Cross also got superstar dev, but him and Leonard, I think were our only dev ups on defense and on offense. I don't think we had any at all, but that's to be expected, I guess. So now I'll restructure some contracts and we'll see what we can do in free agency. Okay, we were actually able to free up a crazy amount of cap space. So we're gonna be going for a crazy amount of, I guess, high-end talent here for the most part. I mean, at least good players, some of the best players available in this free agency class or free agent class. We're going for Joel Batonio, Amon Ross St. Brown, Khalil Mack, Defensive Player of the Year last year, Khalil Mack, David Njoku, and Osa Odigizua. Most of these players are older. Over half of them are 29 or older, but I kinda wanna make a run this year. And if it doesn't work out, that's fine, because these are all short contracts anyways. I think Batonio is a one-year, Mack is a one-year, Njoku might be like a three-year, but he's kind of a long-term plan anyways. Same with Odigizua, and then St. Brown is obviously a longer contract, because we he's only 25, but the older players here are on shorter deals is the point I'm trying to make here. So assuming Khalil Mack plays how he did last year, which I'm not really expecting him to do that, but hopefully he does at least well. Now that I said that, he's gonna suck, but we'll see what happens. But anyways, let's see if we can get any of these players here. So we get everybody except Njoku and Odigizua. Really? We get Batonio and we get Mack, but Amon Ross St. Brown unfortunately goes to the Cardinals. Damn, that really sucks, actually. Our whole plan was centered around us bringing him in. That's why I switched to a more pass-heavy scheme, but he unfortunately goes to the Cardinals. There is also DeAndre Hopkins here, but like, I don't really want to do that. And David Njoku doesn't sign either. He is interested in, I think, the Packers. God, I don't want to sign him to a five-year deal. How about two years, 24.8 mil? That still doesn't give us the lead. How about two years, 27 mil? That still doesn't give us the lead. Okay, <laughs> cool. How about two years, 30 mil. That does give us the lead, okay. Well, we now have the lead for these two again, David Njoku and Oso Digizua. Let's see if we can sign them. And neither of them sign, of course. Let's just go for Michael Pierce on a one-year deal. He's interested, and we'll just find a different defensive tackle at 
some other time, but we do need a good tight end. We don't have a good tight end, and that's the focal point of the Kansas City offense, obviously. So we'll just overpay the hell out of him for two years, and we'll see what happens. God, that is so much money. I don't know if I even want to do that. <laughs> it's two years, 36 mil for a, a fine tight end, but that's going to be the highest paid tight end in the NFL, I think. It's only two years, though. Let's see if we can get either of these two. We get Pierce. We don't get Najoku. Whatever. Fuck David Najoku. <laughs> He didn't want to join the team anyways. But we at least got some good players in free agency. So now let's get to the draft. But here in the draft, we have the 13th overall pick. The Lions have the number one pick here. And what do we want to do here? We have a few needs. We definitely have right guard, maybe tight end, but that's a big maybe. Like we have whatever his name is. I can't think of it. Dude, I'm so tired. I can't think of his name. I'm not even going to try. But we have a solid tight end with star dev and we definitely need another pass rusher and ooh, the one I wanted is still available Quincy Perkins he doesn't look great but he looks good enough <laughs> Ooh, like all the ones I wanted are still here for some reason I thought we would be picking later I don't know why I'm just kind of stupid sometimes huh Marvin Dowling might actually be the best I wouldn't guess that from looking at him but at least he is a for sure first round talent but like his play rec isn't very good his block shed isn't very good interesting I mean I'm gonna take him because he he is like the safest option at least as at least a guaranteed first round guy I do wish I focus scouted the other guys too but we're gonna go with the safe pick in Marvin Dowling out of South Carolina and he has hidden dev I thought for sure he was gonna be a normal but no he actually looks pretty good he has really good acceleration at a 91 which is like one of the most important things for pass rushers in real life their get off so this dude actually looks really good he looks really well rounded too so we'll take it and now in the second round there are some QBs available I mean obviously we're not gonna go for that but both of these guys actually look pretty good Anderson might be slightly better Hilton only has D throw on the run and C medium accuracy and D play action neither of them look great though but let's maybe look at a guard here I don't know if we're gonna get a good enough tight end to start but we could definitely get a good enough guard to start oh those are some nice stats low-key I mean he's not that fast or that strong Wrong? I don't know. Oh, if we're going with the tight end, though, we're going with Rashawn Rice out of Washington State. Lots of A's. Ran a 4.58 at the combine. That wasn't even the fastest tight end. Who is? A 4.99? Definitely not that guy. I don't know. The one who was the fastest must have gotten taken. 5.12 speed. Just moved to tackle at that point. Damn. Oh, here he is. Devontae Gentry. Ooh. Oh, his ratings are really bad. I wonder if he would be like a good receiver conversion or something thing because he's fast he's good jumping but he's just an awful tight end I don't know I might take him just for fun in like the seventh round or something but anyways we're gonna go with Rashawn Rice I'm always disappointed by like tight end overalls so this it's probably gonna be the same story here but he looks too amazing to not take so let's take him here hidden dev 85 speed I thought that would be like more like 87 but it is what it is 87 excel good strength we'll take it and now in the third round I definitely definitely want to go with a guard now or well no we we got Joel Batonio never mind I almost forgot okay we're good there I'm recording this like two half two hours after I did free agency so like I always forget but yeah we did sign a very good guard obviously this guy's so interesting looking he's I don't think he's good but he has a few really good traits so I will probably take a few more picks maybe we do kind of need a defensive tackle we didn't get nope I might have lied again I think we got Michael Pierce right Okay, I need a refresher of the roster. I'm struggling. Okay, Jelani Woods is his name. Our O-line is completely good. We don't need anything on offense anymore. On defense, maybe a linebacker, but really only Leonard and Cadet are even going to play. And I forgot we got Khalil Mack. So, <laughs> oh well, he'll uh, he'll be the eventual replacement to Khalil Mack. Mack is probably only going to be here for, the, for this season. And then he's probably just going to retire. We could maybe use a corner. We could maybe use another safety. I mean, we have two good good enough ones I guess but a third one wouldn't hurt so we'll see if there's a good linebacker corner or safety I'm glad I did that because I just I don't know I was struggling but I'm very much okay with the first pick we got he looked good and we're eventually gonna need it and it's not like we needed much else anyways the team is already coming together really nice this guy might be good Ladarius Dalton I don't know his play rec isn't great he's not good in coverage but he is fast and strong we might go with him Ooh, John McCrary that sounds like a, 
congressman name or something. That's an interesting name. A press, B zone coverage. Not super fast, but not like slow necessarily. This guy's interesting. We might take him here. Cause yeah, I don't see any crazy good looking safeties. McCain might be all right. Eh, no, he's slow. Well, he's probably decent. We could go with him after this if we wanted to, but let's go. This is gonna be the last pick I show, but let's go with John McCrary. I don't know if he's amazing, but he looks pretty good. Maybe like a 70, two overall but a lot of the time when i guess the players are like lower than i guess so he's probably like a 70 but we'll see <laughs> normal dev unfortunately but 91 speed that's pretty good he looked really good on paper we'll see what his overall is but i will see y'all for the draft recap okay you know what this draft was actually pretty good i made every single pick here some of them were definitely better than others for sure but marvin dowling is a 76 at outside linebacker what's he gonna be at defensive end Probably, I don't know how speed rushers move to defensive end, really. I also don't love the number 21. Oops, I am fucking stupid. He has star dev, apparently, but he stays at a 76. They changed where, like, the um stats and traits are. So I do that a lot. Most of the time, I keep myself from doing it, but that time, I was a dumbass. So that's cool. And then Rashawn Rice is a 74 overall, wearing an actual decent number for his position. Did I say 79? I meant 74. I don't know what I said. I need to sleep. John McCrary is exactly in the range that I thought he would be. I said 72, and because I said 72, he'll probably be a 70, but he is dead in between at a 71. But we'll take that. And then these two aren't great, Seymour and Barnett. Did Seymour have a dev trait? I can't remember. No. And then we only had four receivers on the roster, so I took Teddy Pettis. Going with playmakers is so broken in this game, they're almost always at least fine. So we'll take Take that and then Gentry is only a 61, but he does have star dev, so that's kind of cool. God, his ratings are so bad though. He has really good deep route. Okay, he legit might be a receiver. Hold on. Uh he he goes down two overall. You know what? We need a receiver. We're gonna move him to receiver. <laughs> I might like change his ratings around a little bit, but keep him at a 59. I might like lower his weight and then maybe bump his speed and excel up a tiny bit and bump like his strength down or something. But I'll keep him at a 59. We'll see. I don't even know if I care enough to do that, but just to be a little bit realistic. And then Leonard Holloman is a 66 overall, the safety that I took. He's whatever. So not a bad draft class at all. We didn't we didn't get any day one starters except maybe the tight end, but either way, we got some good players. So with that, let's get into your number three. Bruh, I just had like the weirdest, <laughs> the weirdest banana ever. That shit was like gummy. I don't know how to explain it, but it was like thick. That was weird. It's still sitting next to me. I don't know if I like want to finish it. It's not like bad or anything. It's like, it's not like it's old. It's brand new. It's just like gummy. I mean, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but it's like thick. It's like dense. I, that's so weird. I don't know. Anyways, back to the rebuild. <laughs> I'm just really struggling today. Our team is looking very, very good. Up to an 85 overall. We have an 89 overall offense. I'm kind of surprised it is. I guess just our offensive line and then Jonathan Taylor carry that for sure. But like, we really only have have three players higher than an 87 on offense, or I guess higher than an 86. So, you know, I'm surprised that we have an 89 offense, but it's cool to see. It looks really good. And then our defense is only an 81 somehow. Our defense almost looks better than our offense. I mean, I know we have better, a few better players on offense, but our defense also looks really good. Obviously, we added Michael Pierce, Khalil Mack, Marvin Dowling in the first round of the draft. He looks very good. 82 finesse moves as a rookie and he will get playing time as like a rush end, so that's fun. At least I think he will. We'll see what we do. I do want to get him playing time, but we'll see. And then on offense, we obviously added Rashawn Rice, Joel Batonio, and I think that was it this year, but we'll have to see what Rashawn Rice can do at tight end, and I guess what his dev trade is and everything. Hopefully like Superstar or X Factor, but probably just Star. We'll see. But let's get to the midseason point of year three, and hopefully we can do well this year. Well, if that isn't the most Madden thing I've ever seen then I don't know what is. When we sign a bunch of big name free agents and build an 85 overall team, we are two and four. Um, <laughs> yeah, our offense isn't doing great and our defense, the yards are good, but we're allowing the 21st most points per game in the NFL or 21st? We're 21st for points per game allowed is what I'm trying to say, which obviously isn't great. Um, <laughs> is it the new offense I switched to? Is that the problem? That very well could be 
be the problem. We'll see. Let's check right now what the stats are looking like. Anthony Richardson's doing fine, just not that many yards, which is weird. Jonathan Taylor's doing well. The blocking is good. Is it just our defense straight up? I don't know. We're getting good pressure. Okay, we are definitely letting Quiddy Pay go. Well, he's just not getting much playing time, I guess. Only 158 snaps. You would hope for him to get at least half a sack during that time, but I guess not. Oh, and we have zero interceptions so far. Okay, that's the problem. Do we have any fumble recoveries? Oh, we haven't forced a turnover on defense. Okay, that is the problem of our team. <laughs> I figured it out. I was like, this all looks fine. This all looks decent, but uh, no, that's not great. So hopefully that just figures itself out. We'll see. But we have some re-signings to make here. Quiddy pay? Hell no. Especially not now. Nick Cross is really cheap and has superstar dev, so four years, 16 mil, and the offer is getting tempting. We can up it a little more. That's fine. Braden Smith has been good. I know as soon as we pay him, he's going to be horrific, but three years si or 51.9 mil isn't too bad. And my least favorite message in the game. He's going to take it, just not yet for whatever reason. <laughs> Bernard Raymond, he's been pretty nice throughout the rebuild, has been good in real life this year. We will offer him three years. Eh, we'll offer him four years, 52. He'll probably take that, and he does. And then I think we're good on everybody else for now. We'll obviously re-sign some of these older players at the end of the year after they regress, so they'll be a little cheaper. And we'll have the fifth year for Anthony Richardson. That's expensive for a guy that hasn't been that good yet. I mean, he's been okay, but obviously the Colts are hoping for more in real life, and so are we. So we might not pick up the fifth year, but we'll probably re-sign him. Probably. Emphasis on the probably. <laughs> so with that, we'll just have to hope that things can sort themselves out. So let's get to the end of year number three, and we'll see what happens. Okay, well, we are just recreating the Colts in real life for just right around 500 every single year. We are eight and nine this year, and surprise, surprise, our defense sucked. Our offense was actually good, and the playbook change was good. We had a top five offense, but we had a bottom 10 defense, so that's not, not great. Great, but let's check out the season stats. I saw right there, Jonathan Taylor had like 1,400-ish yards, but Anthony Richardson definitely benefiting from the playbook playbook change. I was like messing up my words that whole sentence. <laughs> but 4,100 yards for him, 34 touchdowns, 11 picks, good completion percentage. I don't know how I just did that. Jonathan Taylor, almost 1,500 yards, 5.8 yards per carry, 16 touchdowns. Even though the yards aren't as high as they have been, this is maybe his best year so far just because of his yards per carry. That's insane. And Rashawn Rice as a rookie with 1,100, almost 1,200 yards and 14 touchdowns. Definitely benefiting from the Chiefs playbook. Gabe Davis almost 1,000 yards too. Only 800 yards from downs, but 10 touchdowns and not much for Michael Pittman, surprisingly. For some reason, we're going to Gabe Davis more than Michael Pittman, like a lot more. 24 receptions more. And then, of course, as soon as we re-sign Bernard Raymond, he sucks, but our interior was fine and Braden Smith was amazing. Only one sack allowed on the season from him. And on defense, Shaquille Leonard led the team with 135 tackles, 133 for Jermaine Cadet. Tackles for loss, 21 from Mack, 20 from Buckner. Damn. And then sacks, 13 and a half from Khalil Mack. I hope he doesn't retire. We'll see. He is 34. Because outside of him, I mean, Pearson Buckner did well. Eight for Pierce, seven and a half for Buckner. But Dowling with three and Quiddy pay with one sack. I mean, that was in 400 snaps too. I mean, I think you should have at least four. I mean, at least three. I I don't know. That's not great. <laughs> and then interceptions, we finished with a deadly five. That's great. Two for Moore and Rodgers and one for Leonard. But that's five more than we had at the midseason. And no fumble recoveries, so our defense forced five turnovers. I think we might need a new defensive playbook too. But MVP goes to Lamar here. I've been seeing him win it a lot lately. Tua on the Texans at number nine. What did they do with CJ Stroud then? Why did they do that? <laughs> okay, if that's what you want to do, then sure, but I don't know that I love that. But Offensive Player of the Year, of course, goes to Lamar. Jonathan Taylor at eight, and then 
Rashawn Rice as a rookie at number 10. Defensive player of the year goes to TJ Watt. Khalil Mack barely getting beat out there, but that doesn't really matter. It's not like Mack is going to develop much more anyways. And no other Colts. Offensive rookie of the year obviously goes to Rashawn Rice. And defensive rookie of the year surprisingly goes to Marvin Dowling. There must have been no good defensive rookies because he was not good. <laughs> I don't know how he got that, but we'll take it. He had three sacks in how many snaps? Almost 800. That is bench worthy. How, how did he win defensive rookie of the year with that kind of production? I don't know, but I guess that'll maybe help him develop. We'll see. But now with a 91 overall offense, 86 overall team, somehow not making the playoffs. Let's get into the off season and God, we'll just see what we can do. I, <laughs> the team's already good. I don't know what else to do. Just hope that our secondary does better next year. Maybe add a new corner. I don't know. I definitely don't think we're going to bring Nick Cross back though. Or was he one of the ones that had two picks? I'll check. I thought it was Moore and um, our other corner, not Dowling, um, Xavier or whatever. Yeah, it was those two. Xavier Rogers and Kenny Moore. No picks from safeties at all. Oh my God. Julian Blackman, no picks and one pass deflection. I might trade him. He hasn't done anything since year one. So we might have two new safeties this year. But in the Super Bowl, the Jags take down the Cowboys 35 to 31. The Cowboys are trying to be the new Bills and lose four Super Bowls in a row. They got two done. We'll see if they can get the next two. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. No, it would because most of the time they win the Super Bowl here. But ooh, couple upgrades for Marvin Dowling though. And I saw an ability slot as I expected from him winning defensive rookie of the year. He does go up to superstar dev. I'm glad I played him in a sense. Like I'm glad we got him the superstar dev, but God, he needs to play better. And then Rashawn Rice definitely doesn't need to play better. I mean, I would like if he played even better, but he doesn't need to. He was a stud last year. Obviously superstar dev for him. I wouldn't have been shocked if he went up to X Factor. He was amazing. The best tight end in the NFL as a rookie. But let's see who we're going to have to re-sign here. Obviously, like all of our older players, or at least the ones we just signed, I just hope Khalil Mack didn't retire. But now that I'm hoping he didn't retire, he probably did retire. Let's see. No, he didn't, thankfully, but he's not interested. Hmm. I mean, how about another one year, 14 mil? I can even up it more. 14 and a half mil? And he takes it. Okay, cool. Quiddy pay. That's funny. Ah, Braden Smith was still in need of a contract. That's why he did so well. Three years, 53 mil, and he does resign. Kenny Moore got superstar dev, but I just want to overhaul this secondary. Plus, he's 31 years old. I mean, he's good for this team in real life, but we just, I want to get younger and better in general. Michael Pierce was pretty good. We'll see if there's anyone better in free agency, but he did well. We'll probably resign him. And then Ryan Kelly wasn't great. Yeah, uh, last year or the year before, he was pretty bad too. This last year, he wasn't too bad, actually. We'll give him a one year 9.9 .9 mil. He resigns. Obviously, lots of re signings here. And it looks like Joel Batonio did retire, unless I already re. No, I don't think I re signed him. So it looks like he did retire. And I think everybody else here, I'm fine with letting go. And I don't think I'm going to pick up the fifth year on Anthony Richardson. I want to pay him sooner before he starts developing even more so he's a little cheaper. I wish I could like extend players. I wish that was a thing in Madden, like before their contract expires. I don't know why that isn't a thing in this game, but <laughs> it's not for some reason because I would just give him a big contract right now if I could. But anyways, let's get into free agency and let's really try to, I guess, overhaul this secondary like I've been saying. That's our main thing. And we probably need a guard now, now that Joel Batonio retired, but let's see. Okay, well, considering the fact that four of the top five players, or three of the top four players are kickers and punters, doesn't look like it's a great free agent class, unfortunately. Oh yeah, it's it's real bad. Um, well, that's a tough year to need players then. How has Donovan Wilson been? We could get him in on like a one-year Band-Aid deal if we want to. Uh, only two picks throughout the rebuild. Um, decent amount of pass deflections, but not much better than the players we've had. Damn, that kind of sucks. Is there like a linebacker we can move to safety? <laughs> Something? Maybe Kenny Moore would want to come back and play safety? That might not be the worst. That would be cursed, but it might work. We'll try that, I guess. God, this is just a shit free agent class though. But I think that's all we're gonna do here. So let's see if we can get Kenny Moore, Michael Pierce, and Nick Cross. That's, what an elite trio there.
Okay, they all sign and we get Kenny Moore and Michael Pierce, no Nick Cross. I don't know when we're gonna start doing well, but we need it now more than ever. And I'm actually gonna do a trade. You might be able to guess who it is. It's gonna be Julian Blackman. He's been awful. Why have I seen so many players named Cecil in these goddamn draft classes? <laughs> it's too many. We're gonna steal a third round pick. Is that maybe too much? Maybe, but I don't care. I We're taking a third round pick. I guess I never committed to this being a realistic rebuild, even though I just try to do all mine realistically anyways. But I guess let's move Kenny Moore to safety. I wonder if we could trade for a safety. That might be a good idea. I feel like I always end up trading for safeties in this game. I don't know why. Like, if I do a trade, it's for a safety. Weird how that works out. <laughs> and it's always Buda Baker, so you know what? I might do that just because. Just to keep the tradition going. Oh, he's expensive as hell. I mean, hell, Jalen Ramsey in real life went for like a third round pick and a bag of chips. Why is Buda Baker so expensive? CJ Stroud is on the trade block? and nobody's traded for him they must want a crazy amount for him but like why why hold him captive there if you signed Tua why not just trade him like I don't know but Brian Branch is on the trade block I don't know why but I'll I'll go for him oh whoa well we're trading one of my draft crushes for another one of my draft crushes here Adetamiya Adabare for Brian Branch straight up I loved both of them I thought both of them were steals Branch looked amazing in his time playing but Adabare I don't think has played at all yet, but we're just trading. That's a weird trade. I don't know why the Lions took that, but we'll take it. Is he gonna start for them at least? Let me see. I really don't know why the Lions took that. Um, yeah, he'll be their number two as long as they don't add anybody else, but they also are kind of set up as a 3-4. <laughs> I hate how teams always end up looking like this, where they have like two 4-3 defensive ends and then like 3-4 outside linebackers too. Like, I, whatever. Certified EA moment. That definitely wasn't a realistic trade we did, but we we will take it. All right, well, in the draft, the Jets have the number one overall pick. We pick at number 17. Weren't we at like 13 when we went eight and nine last year? I guess we were borderline a playoff team. I don't know. But I don't even know what to go with here. We could go with like a corner. We could go with a safety. Tony Lewis looks solid. That uh, is, uh, never mind. I don't know if he is very good. His play rec sucks and his pursuit isn't great. I feel like every defensive rookie has bad play rec for some reason. At least most of them do. I think we might go with Shaq Peoples, which is kind of a funny name. <laughs> He's a first round talent for sure. There isn't really anyone that looks better unless Ben Lennon is fast. Eh, not really. I guess we'll go with Shaq Peoples because he's really the best looking secondary player available. He is already 23, which isn't great, but has elite strength, great speed, was great or elite for almost everything at the combine except agility, but he looks really good. So let's go with Shaq peoples out of Mississippi State and he unfortunately has normal death really good strength and really good speed obviously but well actually he's hold on I think I had a corner that ran like a 437 and had like 91 speed but this dude ran like a 44 at the combine and had 94 I don't understand that but whatever <laughs> really wish he had a dev trait but it is what it is and Tony Lewis is still available I that might be a bad sign He's probably not very good, but we could take him anyways just because there's some good-looking linebackers right here Isaiah Bowles and Zach Mullins both of them look good, but we don't really need linebacker that much I don't really even know what we need at all. Maybe a guard. We did lose Joel Batonio None of the guards look good at all though. <laughs> well, this guy actually doesn't look bad, but he is oh no He's 22. I thought that said 24. I think we might go with David Herrera great strength not quite elite, but he has good ratings. Well, does he though? His finesse is probably F for both. At least F for pass block, but maybe it's... Or no, I was just looking at his pass blocking stats in general. He probably has F pass block finesse, but he might have okay pass block power. We'll see. But let's take him here and hidden dev, 91 strength, good excel, we'll take it. And now I have no idea what to do. <laughs> this receiver's really interesting. He's a deep threat with 454 speed. Um, I kind of want to take him just out of curiosity because <laughs> he doesn't even look bad necessarily. It just looks like he's mislabeled, which makes me think he might have really good deep route running. I don't know. I guess the best it could be is a B. He's interesting. I We don't need a receiver, but we don't really need anything else right now other than, I guess, another corner safety, but none of them look good. So let's just go with Elton Newberry. Very interesting looking player. Normal dev 
have, unfortunately. I don't know what I expected, but maybe he'll be decent. We'll see. <laughs> but with that, I might make a few more picks, but I will see y'all at the end of the draft. Okay, here in the draft, we actually did really well. With our first pick, Mr. Shaq Peoples is a 77 overall. Hold on, I wanna, I wanna say something right now. I've gotten a lot of comments saying how ass I am at drafting. I'm definitely not the best, but I don't know, like, I don't know if other people that, like, y'all are watching are using, like, higher level draft classes, but, I mean, for example, the corner we got at number 17 or whatever is tied for the fifth highest overall player in the class. There was, I guess, a better corner I could have gotten in Ben Lennon, but we still got, like, one of the best ones. David Herrera, a 75 overall in the second round that was tied for the 18th best player in the class, probably the best guard left in the class, or the best guard in general in the class, yeah. Like, I don't know, man, I'm just working with what I got. But like, I think it was the Texans rebuild, I got like a million comments like, no offense, but you are fucking awful at drafting, like, yeah, no offense taken there. <laughs> like, hey man, I'm just working with what I got. But yeah, the top two players we got are good and they both will start. Elton Newberry is fine. That was kind of a throwaway pick, though. He just looked interesting. He looks, actually, his ratings are better than his overall would say. I would guess he's like a 75 or something if I didn't know better. He actually looks pretty good, but only a 71, unfortunately. And then, obviously not much in the rest of the draft, because it was later picks. We got like an okay backup safety, too, in Darren McQueen, a 69 overall. Nice. So definitely not too bad of a draft. We'll take it. But here's a look at the team heading into year number four of the rebuild. Up to an 84 now. I thought, I swore I just saw that it was an 85, but I guess not. But either way, we're looking really good. And there aren't really any holes on offense. There are definitely things we could upgrade, especially adding like a better receiver because we don't really have any monsters there yet. But on defense, I don't feel quite as good about it as I do with our offense. Our corner group is a little shaky. We do have the rookie Shaq Peoples, so hopefully he can and maybe win a rookie of the year. We'll see. I might put him as like the number two corner and the nickel corner just to get him like as much playing time as I can. We'll see what happens there. But of course, I also don't feel great about our safety group. Um, I don't know what Dowling is gonna do. We'll just have to see what happens with our defense and hope it doesn't completely suck. But with that, let's get to the midseason point of year four and we'll see how the team can do this year. Okay, well, we're just gonna be mid every year apparently. We are three and three three at the midseason point of year four. I don't know what to do with this team. I am, uh, we probably should switch the defensive playbook, but our defense isn't good, so I don't know if it's just the playbook or what it is. Actually, let me see, where does our defense rank in the NFL? There are definitely some better ones, but there are definitely a lot that we are better than, I guess. Because we have, what, an 83? So yeah, there are definitely teams with better defenses. We actually do have one of the worst. Okay, so we're not gonna mess with the playbook. But our offense is doing really well. It's top five. But we, of course, have some re-signings to make here. Jonathan Taylor, Anthony Richardson, Josh Downs, Quentin Nelson. I'm glad we have almost 200 mil because this is like literally everybody. <laughs> but Jonathan Taylor, we will offer three years, 50.7 mil, and he re-signs. Anthony Richardson. Oh, he's cheap. Six years, 175 mil, and oh, we might have to need to, we might need to up the money there. We'll see. Josh Downs, three years, 24.6 mil, he resigns. Quentin Nelson hasn't been as good in real life the last couple years, but is good here. I guess we'll try two years, 37.8 mil, and he accepts that. Brian Branch, how's he doing this year? Because we could just look to upgrade there completely. No picks, four pass deflections. I mean, the, the pass deflections are good, but no picks. I don't love that. The reason I got him was to hopefully make more turnovers, but we'll see. We might resign him at the end of the year. Gabe Davis is already 27. We could possibly possibly upgrade there. Shaquille Leonard will re-sign at the end of the year because he'll regress. Same with Buckner. Brent, we could upgrade there. Moore is probably going to regress. We could probably upgrade there. Mac is probably going to regress, but I do want him back at the end of the year. This is literally everybody. Ryan Kelly, Michael Pierce. Who isn't here is the question, <laughs> but we'll re-sign Matt Gay, the greatest player of all time. He re-signs for two years, and I guess we'll re-sign Logan Cook, too. Did he just say he doesn't want to take it right now? Whatever, fine. <laughs> Maybe I won't re-sign 
sign him. And then, I don't know, I guess we'll pick up the fifth year for Xavier Rogers when we can. He's up to an 84. He's actually looking pretty good. But now, let's get to the end of the year, and hopefully our defense doesn't continue to hold us back too bad, but we will see. Okay, well, here we are at the end of year number four, and y'all know why we're here. <laughs> if you haven't already, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Again, 1,500 likes, and I will do maybe another 10-year rebuild. We'll see if y'all want to see that. And of course, once we hit 20k, I have something special planned, so be sure to subscribe. And of course, let me know down below if y'all have any fun ideas for rebuilds, because if I pick your comment, I'll give you a shout out, of course. But here's how the team is looking. We're up to an 87 overall, 91 offense, 84 defense, which isn't like great, but it's, it's serviceable, we'll say that. But in year number four, if you couldn't already guess, we made the playoffs going 11 and six. Despite still not having a good defense, our offense just absolutely carried. Number two in the NFL. But let's check out some of the season stats. God damn, I hope we can get Anthony Richardson back. 4,500 yards, 40 touchdowns. The 15 picks aren't great, but really good completion percentage. I definitely won't complain there. Jonathan Taylor, 1,500 yards, 6.2 per carry, 20 touchdowns. Damn. And Josh Downs was actually our leading receiver with 1,100. 11 100 yards, 10 touchdowns. Rashawn Rice with almost 1,000 yards, 9 touchdowns. And then Gabe Davis and Michael Pittman had over 900 yards, so we will take it. But blocking, Raymond was... Well, considering how much we pass, the O-line was amazing. Raymond was solid. Braden Smith was definitely our best, though. And on defense, Jermaine Cadet led the team with 134 tackles. Leonard with 133 right behind him. Khalil Mack led the team with 100... Nope, not 100. 17 tackles for loss and then sacks 10 and a half for Khalil Mack eight and a half for Buckner only four for Marvin Dowling he has what seven sacks in two full starting years <laughs> that's it's not ideal for a first round pick with superstar dev at like an 84 overall thanks EA and then interceptions ooh still only eight three for Peoples and Rogers and then one for Leonard and Booth huh okay Xavier Rogers with 13 pass deflections where does that rank in the NFL I mean when you go and check like these kind of stats sometimes it doesn't show everybody but I mean at least from the players it's showing here 13 was tied for the most in the NFL so in other words he was pretty good yeah and he did actually have tied for the most in the NFL love to see that but <laughs> that's super fitting after yesterday's game against the 49ers as of the time of recording this uh Dak Prescott wins MVP yeah how's how's that looking Madden ratings adjuster I don't don't know about that one he wins MVP here for god knows what reason and Anthony Richardson all the way down at number seven? What? I mean, he threw 15 picks, but he also threw 4,500 yards, 40 touchdowns, had like a 72% completion percentage, like, bruh. And Daniel Jones up here, too. I love this game. It's super realistic. But Offensive Player of the Year goes to Josh Jacobs. Jonathan Taylor just cannot seem to win one here, but has been in the mix every year. And Chris Jones wins Defensive Player of the Year. Drew Sanders up there. That's interesting. Jermaine Pratt up there. That's interesting. Interesting. But Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Brandon Matthews for the Broncos. No Colts. And Defensive Rookie of the Year does go to Shaq Peoples. That's pretty huge. So we should at least have two of our three corners set with Peoples and Rodgers. But we're going to be taking on the 13-4 and four Baltimore Ravens in the wild card. We are screwed. <laughs> they have an 88 overall team. Well, they do like to play down to competition in real life. So maybe that'll happen here. I don't know. We do have a home game at least. But they have two more wins wins and a two overall better team. Well, I guess probably only a one overall better team. So you know what? Considering like home field advantage and only a one overall difference, this is actually a pretty fair game. But now that I say that, we are gonna get bodied. I absolutely know it. But let's just see what happens here. <laughs> Can't wait. And yeah, oh yeah, I was right. Our score gets doubled on us. We get beat 42 to 21, of course. <laughs> Why wouldn't we? Okay, well in the Super Bowl, the Raiders of all teams take down the Vikings of all teams. 34 to 10. Who's the Raiders quarterback? I hope it's not like Jimmy G still or something. No, they have actually a good one. Well, he's solid. Roy Peterman, 79 overall star dev, only 23 
years old Boise State. That's interesting. 97 throw power. Damn. Okay. Has there like ever been a good Boise State QB? I'm sure there has that I'm just not thinking of. The only one I can think of is Kellen Moore. And Brett Rippin went to Boise State, right? I don't know. I'm sure there are good ones. Can't wait for some 55 year old to be in my comments like, how the fuck did you forget about CFL MVP fucking Joe Schmo? Like, I don't know. I get some weird comments sometimes. <laughs> I get a concerning amount of comments calling me like daddy or some shit. I, for some reason, I've attracted like a mix of like 50 year olds and then like 12 year olds in my comments. I, it's a weird experience to say the least. But obviously Shaq Peoples got star dev. It actually looks like Xavier Rogers got superstar. We'll take that. Unfortunately, Khalil Mack did retire though, as I kind of expected. And Josh Downs got X Factor and Rashawn Rice got X Factor. And our center retired. Why can I not think of his name? Kelly? Ryan Kelly, right? Yeah, he's only been in the NFL like fucking seven years or how long. Sometimes I just can't remember names. One of my many amazing traits. But speaking of amazing traits, I mean, we definitely got some. So let's get into the off season and let's again try to overhaul this defense. <laughs> but we still have 170 mil to work with. I mean, that's gonna go away pretty quick, but oh, Anthony Richardson rejects the contract. Well, we're gonna tag him, obviously. That is fucking expensive, 55.7 mil. I mean, we'll do it, obviously, but I wanna sign him. I <laughs> it's not gonna be fun to pay him that much money every year on a tag, and every year we don't sign him, he's just gonna develop more, and he's gonna be more expensive. Like, I wanted to get him back there, but it is what it is. But we'll pick up the fifth year for Xavier Rogers. Brian Branch, how did he do? No picks, he had a really good amount of pass deflections. We'll actually re-sign him and just hope that he gets more interceptions next year. <laughs> um, Shaquille Leonard, I don't know if Cole fans would hate me, but I don't know if I'm gonna re-sign him. Although if we don't, I don't know what else we're gonna do there. Would he take like a player-friendly one-year deal? One-year 17.4 mil, he does not, okay. Buckner, how about one-year 19 mil? He, oh, wow, damn, <laughs> nobody wants to come back. We made the playoffs, guys, you know that, right? And then I'm not really that interested in anybody else here. How did Kenny Moore do actually? Well, either way, I think I'm gonna replace him, but yeah, no picks, three pass deflections, no thanks. Yay, we got Logan Cook back. That's the league changing right there. Well, let's get into the offseason and we'll try to uh, make up for the players we lost or get some of them back. We'll see. I feel like I'm getting unlucky in this rebuild though. Ooh, it's an old free agent class. There isn't anybody younger than 30 up here, but <laughs> there are some good players. Okay, well, here are the players we're gonna go for in free agency. Definitely some big ones. We're gonna go for Tyreek Hill for starters. Um, if we don't get him, um, then it sucks to be me, but I did literally all I could. I did very player friendly. I think I even bumped it up a little bit. The Panthers and Falcons are also interested, but we'll see what happens there. Marcus Williams to be our new free safety. We do have the lead for him, so we should hopefully get him, but I'm pretty sure I had the lead for Amon Ross St. Brown and we didn't get him. Do I have very high interest on for free agents? I thought I did. Let me see. Yeah, very high free agent motivation impact. So I don't know. I guess we'll just see what happens there. <laughs> And then we're gonna try to re-sign DeForest Buckner. We'll try to bring in Matt Milano because he's like a third of the price of Shaquille Leonard and it's linebacker, so like who really cares? And then we are also going for Keanu Benton. Is there a better player I could get there? I mean, he's not great here. He's already 26, only a 76 overall. Um, no, that's like the best I can do. Well, that kind of sucks. But let's see if we can get any of these players right off the bat. Every one of them signed except Keanu Benton. Honestly, with how the like Amon Ross St. Brown deal went and with how our re-signings have gone, I don't think we're gonna get Tyreek Hill, but holy shit, dude. We don't get Tyreek or Marcus Williams. What is the, does nobody wanna join the Colts? Is that like a thing in Madden? Tyreek Hill goes to the Falcons and Marcus Williams goes to the Panthers. This is just the definition of an unlucky rebuild. <laughs> what can I say? I guess we'll try to go for Justin Reed, but I'm sure we won't get him either. Oh, definitely. 
definitely not with other teams with green interest. We'll have to overpay the shit out of him. Eh, we'll see if he takes that. Probably not, though. This is just unlucky as shit. I mean, what can I really do about this? We'll try to get JSN, but that's a big compromise, and even though we have a lead there, we probably won't get him. And we're actually also gonna go for Matt Judon just to be a replacement for Khalil Mack, I guess. He had like eight and a half sacks last year, 11 the year before, so we'll see if we can get him. But let's see if any of these players sign. I would guess that we won't get at least one of these two. We might not get either of them. But let's see if any of these players sign. They... JSN doesn't sign yet, but we still have a lead, so that tells me he's probably not gonna sign. And Keanu Benton has another team interested, but we get Matt Judon at least. And of course, we don't get Justin Reed, so I guess we'll go for Siaki Ika. We'll see if we can get him. JSN we're definitely not gonna get. Just kidding, we do. I just need to say we're not gonna get the player, and then we do. What a discipline pointing free agent class. I mean, we were going for Tyreek Hill, Marcus Williams, Justin Reed, like, bruh, and we didn't get any of them. At least we got some players, but like, huh, that's just, <laughs> that's tough. I, I don't know what to do about that. I don't even want to know what would happen if we had it set to like normal free agent motivation impact or whatever. But anyways, I guess we'll have to get to the draft and we have some major holes on this team, unfortunately. Okay, interesting trade here. We're going to be trading two backups, Barnett and Christmas, a backup D tackle and lineman, and a second round pick for Amani Copeland and a third round pick from the 49ers. There's a reason I'm trading for Amani Copeland, and that is because he has superstar dev and is only 23 years old. I did set safety as our focus position, but we probably would have had to spend a first round pick, and I don't even know if we would have gotten as good of a player as Copeland. And we still can draft a safety if we want to, because we we need a third corner. It can be Rodgers and Peoples on the outside and we'll draft some nickel corner as a safety in maybe the first round if we want to. Now we still need a center, but I kind of have a plan for that too. We got absolutely screwed in free agency, but I'm trying to make the most of it here. Oh, that was actually easier than I thought it would be. We are trading Chad O'Connell, a backup linebacker for us, in a fourth round pick for Kurt Buckley, I think his name is, from the Chiefs. And he's going to be our new center, I think. Yeah, he's definitely thinner than Herrera, so we'll move him to center. Probably will be like a 75 overall there, maybe a 76. Yeah, 75 overall. Definitely not too bad for like a fourth round pick and a player that probably wasn't going to make the team. So I did what I could here. Still not looking amazing, but a lot better than we were a few minutes ago. So let's get to the draft and let's try to fix the remaining holes we have. Pause. But we have the number 24 pick in the the draft. The Dolphins actually pick at number one of all teams, but I am recording this later in the day, so let me get a refresher. I know we need nickel corner, and did we still need a center? No, we got Buckley. Okay, so D-tackle, corner, and maybe another edge, because Judon's old, and uh, <laughs> Dowling is awful. So those will be our main positions. But there were a lot of good-looking safeties in this class, luckily, and it looks like a lot of them are still here. Ooh. Do we want to go with Cordell Freeman, who has A man coverage, but only C pursuit, C tackle, C zone, good speed, solid strength? Or do we want to go with Jimmy Ray, who has good speed, great strength, and great excel? A lot more well-rounded, a B for literally every, <laughs> literally every rating is a B. I think he's better. I like the man coverage of Freeman a lot, but Ray is just a lot more well-rounded. And a year younger. God, I don't know if he's going to have a dev trait, but it would be stupid to not go with just the straight up better looking player. He he might because he has bad injury, but I don't know. Let's go with Jimmy Ray. Okay, he has hidden dev, 90 speed, 92 excel, 71 strength. I like that pick a lot. He's a little thick to play nickel corner, six foot 214, but that's fine. Who cares? We could even put Brian Branch there if I really wanted to, but eh, I don't know. We'll see. And now in the third round, I guess let's look for a defensive tackle. Oh, this guy's interesting. Gordon Arthur. He's B finesse moves, but he's listed as a run stopper. He's 4'8 speed, and he ran a 4'7'4 at his pro day. Good enough strength, I guess. That'll probably only be like an 84, though, but should be like 78 speed or something. I'll look at the other defensive tackles, but he looks interesting. Oh, never mind. This guy might be better. Yep, I only had to go one more spot. We found Kalik Dansby. Kalik. What, a, what an interesting name. There's also Luke Toll, who 
who's slower, but really strong, A play rec, A power moves? I, I don't know which one's better. <laughs> There's also Jimmy Ward. He doesn't look as good as the others, but he still looks solid, good strength. There's also Joe Clemens. He's a little worse, but he would be good value later. This is a loaded defensive tackle class. I wonder if I should take a player and then trade back up, because I think Luke Toll might be the best, just because of his strength, and he has really good power moves and play rec, but I guess this is really similar to our last dilemma, where do we want to go with, like, the slightly more well-rounded player in Dansby, but he has some amazing traits about him, or do we want the amazing power moves play rec strength guy? I don't know. Let's go with Luke Toll. He's a scheme fit, really good strength, and power moves. Sounds good to me. Hidden Dev, 99 strength, 87 Excel. I wish I didn't even sign Siaki Ika at all. You know what? I'm gonna do something. <laughs> Who needs a defensive tackle here? Do the Saints need one? And eh, not really. The Bears do. Oh god, they really do. Okay. <laughs> How do they have an 89 mil in cap and they didn't sign anybody better than Doug Jones at a 63 overall? Make it make sense. But we are giving them Siaki Ika. I know we just signed him, but we found better options. I don't even know if we need this defensive tackle. I'm all, I'm just kind of interested in him, like your mother's interested in me. Let's go with Kalik Dansby out of South Carolina. Okay, I think I made the right pick to begin with then. Dansby, I think, will be a good overall. Maybe even a better overall. I don't know. But only normal dev. He does have 80 speed, though. 88 strength. He looks pretty good. I'm really surprised he doesn't have a hidden dev, but definitely should be a good third defensive tackle. And now with the last pick that I'm going to take here, I wonder if there's another good safety, because that's been our big problem. Ooh. Marvin Cheeks doesn't look Cheeks. He actually looks pretty good. Uh, his coverage is awful, but he's good play rec, good block shed, really good pursuit and tackle. We might go with him. I don't know if he's great necessarily, but I'm just looking for depth right now. Eddie Gresham looks... Uh, he almost looks like he would be a good corner. I uh, know he's really slow. Never mind. I don't know what he is. Okay, yeah, I don't know if Marvin Cheeks is good, but he looks good on paper outside of his coverage. So let's take him here. Normal dev, but good strength, good enough speed for a 5'11", 222 pound safety. We'll see what his overall is. He'll probably only be like a 68 or something, but I will see y'all for the draft recap. Okay, well, here's how we did in the draft. We actually did pretty well. I was hoping just Jimmy Ray would be a little bit higher of, of, of an overall because I know safeties are really high a lot of the time, but he was a 76 at safety and he stayed a 76 at corner, so we'll take that. Was the other guy better though? I would guess maybe, honestly. Let's see. Oh, there was a 67 overall linebacker taken in the first round. That's not great. Was it Freeman? I think it was Cordell Freeman. Nah, we definitely got the right pick then. Freeman is a 74 with only star dev. I don't know what our guy has, but either way, that was the right pick. But Luke Toll was also the right pick between the two defensive tackles, 74 with a superstar, or with a superstar, with a hidden. I mean, hopefully he has a superstar. But yeah, obviously 99 strength, 81 power moves is a crazy combo as a rookie. Third round pick, so I love to see that. And then even Kalik Dansby is a 72. That's not bad at all. I would definitely say the Ika trade was worth it. And Cheeks, I think I said a 68 or a 69, and he is a 69. I might have just said 68, I don't know. But either way, he looks good. And then I took some questionable picks. This dude right here had like all A's to C's, and apparently they were all C's because he's a 65 overall. And then Julius Patton is only a 66, but he has hidden dev and 99 speed. I'm surprised he's not even a better overall. He was like a first round projected player that fell to wherever we got him, like the fifth round or whatever it was. But he was listed as a playmaker, but he also had B deep route, obviously amazing speed. So maybe we can turn him into something. We'll see. And then Clint Potter. I got a lot of like 98s and 99s. He had 98 throw power. I was just trying to take backups here where we didn't have enough depth. So I just wanted a QB and we happened to get one with 98 throw power. So we'll take it. <laughs> but let's get into year number five of the rebuild. Okay. Well, here we are heading into year number five and we're looking all right. <laughs> this feels like a really low overall team for year number five. I mean, it kind of is. 
is at an 85 overall, but I've just gotten really unlucky, to be honest, with a lot of players signing with other teams when realistically they should sign with us. It's just unfortunate, but we still have a solid team, especially our offense. Our defense, you know, is kind of a different story, but, you know, we'll try again this offseason to upgrade it, but if we can't make players join the team, we can't make them join the team. Like, I, not much I can do there. If we still can't get someone good this offseason, then I'll probably just trade for a super high overall player. We'll see if I even can. But anyways, let's get to the midseason point of year number five, and hopefully we can do well, but we will see. Okay, well, at the midseason of year number five, we are five and two. I don't know if we deserve to be that good, but I'll take it. Once again, it's the same story. Our offense is great, but our defense sucks. But to be fair, our defense does suck, so I'm fine with that. But we have obviously some re-signings to make here, and I checked and it's not too bad. At least not compared to last year, but there definitely are some players here, obviously. Anthony Richardson, we really want back, obviously, but it's just a matter of if he wants to come back. We'll offer him seven years, 259 mil. If there was, dude, I don't know how to do that. I, <laughs> I guess we'll try to give him more money, but he just straight up seems not interested at all. Uh, but Jermaine Cadet, that's a lot of money too for just a linebacker. I mean, he's good, but uh, that's a lot of money. I don't know. And Michael Pittman is older. We're not doing anything here, I guess. That kind of sucks, but yeah, I'm just not really interested in bringing either of these two back yet. And then I want Anthony Richardson, but he doesn't want to rejoin the team. So we'll, we'll just have to overpay him, I guess. That's really all we can do. But now let's get to the end of the year and we will see if we can continue our success. You know what? Actually, I gave in and I decided to pay Jermaine Cadet. I mean, he's only 25. He's really only going to get better already at an 88 with X Factor. And worst case scenario, if we don't have any money, we can just restructure some contracts. So I thought, why not? But now let's get to the end of the year. All right. Well, that is a hell of a choke job as we finish eight and nine. That's that's what I feared. We are just not going to escape 500, are we? I mean, I guess we did. Was it last year we went 11 and six? But yeah, I think we are going to switch our defensive playbook. I mean, it's bad, but I've seen teams with worse defenses do much, much better. So we are going to switch it, I think. But let's check out our season stats. Anthony Richardson was a monster, obviously. As soon as we re-sign him, he won't be, but he is right now. So we'll take it. 4,600 yards, 41 touchdowns, 69% completion percentage. Nice. The picks are still a little high, but like, I'm not going to complain about that. Almost 1,600 yards for Jonathan Taylor, 6.2 yards per carry, 20 touchdowns. You know, in his first game back, he didn't really do much. I mean, they're trying to ease him back in, but Zach Moss was very good. JSN with almost 1,300 yards and 16 touchdowns. Rashawn Rice, 1,000 yards, 9 touchdowns, but not much outside of those two. Definitely time to let Michael Pittman go, though. And for blocking, it was really good, except for Bernard Raymond, but even then, I've had a lot better players do a lot worse, so we'll take it. Matt Milano led the team with 126 tackles. Tackles for loss, 19 from Buckner led the team. And sacks, not many at all. Eight and a half from Buckner, seven and a half from Dowling, his best year so far. Beat his total from his career in one year here with seven and a half. And then six from Judon, only four for Dansby as a rookie. But overall, pretty good rookie year from him. And then interceptions, three for Brian Branch, two for Jimmy Ray and Shaq Peoples, and then one for Matt Milano and Alani Copeland in his first year here. I wonder if this was enough for Jimmy Ray to win rookie of the year. I don't know. That might be wishful thinking, but 93 tackles, five tackles for loss, half a sack and two picks. Probably not. It's probably going to go to like a linebacker or something. Dansby will probably be up there too. He was solid. But let's check out yearly awards. MVP is going to be like either Dak or Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson, or I guess maybe Jalen Hurts. He wins it sometimes. It's Patrick Mahomes. Okay. Anthony Richardson at number five. He's slowly climbing the ranks. CJ Stroud is a 49er now, and Brock Purdy is a bear. <laughs> what happened? There's some weird quarterback stuff going on here. That's interesting. But Offensive Player of the Year finally goes to Jonathan Taylor. Love to see that. JSN at number eight will take it. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Jalen Ramsey at what, like 32 or three years old now, probably? Now that I think about it, I almost never see generated players up here, which is stupid, <laughs> but it is what it is. It's just hard to turn defensive rookies into like true studs for some reason. With offensive players, you can do it sometimes, but even look at this 
list, this is all real players. Same with the NFC one. And my custom rosters have lower ratings for every player even, so it gives, like, generated players bigger chances to become good. Quiddy Pay won Defensive Player of the Year. Of course he did. Why wouldn't he? He was awful for us, but of course that would happen. <laughs> I don't even want him back, though. I'm sure if we got him, he would go right back to how he was for us. But Henry Pearson for the Browns wins AFC Offensive Rookie of the Year, and Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Jimmy Ray. Let's go. We'll take that. And Kalik Dansby at number five, and also something interesting, not about Kalik Dansby, but about our other defensive tackle, is that I unintentionally spoiled his dev trait, because I saw when I was upgrading him around the midseason that he actually does have superstar dev, and he's two upgrades here. So I think we really crushed that draft. Oh my god, Jimmy Ray has superstar too, and he might go up to X Factor, maybe, from winning Defensive Rookie of the Year. We definitely crushed that draft though. I mean, our defense has been giving us problems, but we got two hopefully future studs for this team. So disappointing year in terms of record, but assuming we don't get screwed over in free agency again, we should be able to fix some things, finally. Oh my god, we actually have a ton of upgrades too. <laughs> Rashawn Rice has been such a stud though. He obviously has X Factor factor now. Now up to an 88, 89 with morale. But anyways, I'll spend these upgrades and let's get into the offseason. Okay, well in the Super Bowl, the Jags beat the Eagles 45 to 30. I guess that's a possible Super Bowl for the next few years. I mean, I guess it depends on if the Jags keep getting better and if the Eagles stay as good as they are right now. But that's going to be tough because they definitely have an older roster. But you never know, they could stay about as good and find replacements for those guys. But for the rest of the players that we have to re-sign, I have a feeling that we're gonna end up tagging Anthony Richardson again. He is an X factor now, but let's go very player friendly and we'll up it, but I, I know what the result is gonna be. I know what he's gonna say. We'll offer him seven years, 357 mil, and never mind, he does re-sign. Okay, that seems like a lot of money for only a 50, not 50, an 86 over all, but I guess 51 is kind of a bargain for a quarterback of that range nowadays, which is interesting, but I don't know. But Marvin Dowling, he was good this year, but he's been good literally no other year, and he was just solid this year. He was he was as good as he should be, but no, even then, he probably should have done even better. I don't think we're gonna bring anybody back here at all. Matt Milano did get superstar. If... If he wants to come back on a one-year $9.4 million deal, I'll do it. And he does. Okay, cool. But everyone else here is just a backup or I guess Michael Pittman's the only non-backup, but we're hoping we can find a upgrade over him. So let's see what we can do in free agency. Ooh. <laughs> The top three players are kickers and punters. This is a very weak free agent class. The weakest so far, I think. Well, I wanna do something. So what are we gonna do here? I don't just wanna do something. We need to do something with this defense. Ooh. If we get Uchenna Nwosu, I'm sure he's gonna play more like this than like this. But if he can play somewhere in between that, it could be worth sending him a contract. He's not even that much money. I mean, we kind of need a power guy more because he'll just be like a rotational guy. I don't know. How about very player friendly two year deal? We'll try that. And again, it's unfortunately just gonna be the same story of we're not gonna be able to do much in free agency. <laughs> and I it's not really my fault. I don't know what to do about that. You know what? Fuck Michael Pittman. Let's let's work on a trade. Alright, here we are trading David Herrera and a first round pick for Devontae Smith and a second round pick. I feel like this is a steal for us. I mean, it's a big trade back. It's from number 13 all the way down to number 63, I think the second round pick is, but we're getting a 91 overall receiver. I'm not going to complain about that. We do have to give up David Herrera, but we're just going to move Buckley back over to right guard and then find a new center. Buckley will probably be a 79 at right guard, so that's not really a downgrade there. He's just a year older, but yeah, he is a 79. So now we need a new center, but I'm, I would rather try to find a new center than try to find a number one receiver, so I'm happy with that trade. Oh, DeForest Buckner retired. I'm glad I checked that though. Really? Was he that old? I feel like Matt Milano's older and Matt Judon, but I guess so. That's interesting. But in free agency, I did see Jordan Davis here. Will we be able to get him? 
Probably not. Oh, definitely not. No, never mind. I guess we'll try to bring Grover Stewart back. God, we're having to go with so many band-aids here. There's just nothing I can do about that though. Like we need somebody at these positions. But I honestly might work on another trade here. Maybe, I'm undecided. Uh, I don't know, Alani Copeland was pretty solid and then Brian Branch was pretty solid too. I was gonna look for a new safety, but both of them did well, at least well enough. Okay, I don't know if this is gonna end up being worth it, but we are trading Newberry, Seymour, and McCrary, all three backups and our two second round picks this year for Joey Bosa and just a sixth. I tried to get as much value as I could and that's all we could get. That is the absolute minimum I could get him for, but we desperately need pass rush and he's been good, obviously. He is a good player. It's gonna be super disheartening when he absolutely sucks for us for no reason, but <laughs> You know, he's been really good for the Chargers, obviously, in real life and here. So I don't know if that's gonna be worth it, but I think it's worth it. At the very least, I can say that we tried. And look how much better that 14 sacks looks right there. That's that's so much better. <laughs> it makes it look like our defense was actually passable this last year. So we, we maybe don't need Uchenna now, but like, I almost wanna go for as much pass rush help as we could possibly get, just because it's been such a massive problem for us. But I don't know, he is hit or miss in this game sometimes. Kevin James, I've, I feel like I've seen so many players named Kevin James in this game. I don't know why. He might be a better option than Grover Stewart just because he's younger and pretty much the same overall. Ooh, he's been pretty solid too. Yeah, I know, I know Grover Stewart is a Colt, but Kevin James looks like he's done a lot better, so we'll go with him. As long as he wants to sign, of course, which probably not. So yeah, we'll go for Chenna, and we'll go for Kevin James, and then also Nick Peoples, just to be a good depth linebacker, I guess. Again, we're just going for as much value as we can get. Speaking of that, let's just go for Cordale Spearman, a superstar number two running back. Sounds good to me. Will he play well? Probably not, but it'll make the team look good so we might as well. So let's see if we can get any of these players. We have the lead for all of them. I would guess that we will probably get Spearman and Peoples, the two least valuable ones here. But let's see what happens. Okay, the top three do sign, and we actually get all three. That's a first for this rebuild. I mean, that's what normally happens when you know you have the lead for a player, but you know, that's legit the first time it's happened here. So we'll take it, and then Nick Peoples, I don't care if he signs or not. He does, okay, cool. So those aren't four crazy good players, but they definitely fill some needs for us, so I'm happy with it. But let's get to the draft. But now in the draft, we of course don't pick until the third round. Do we only have one third round pick or do we have two? I know we had two second round picks. I can't remember if I ended up with two third round picks. I guess we'll just figure it out when we get there. So let's get to the third round. I think it's only one. Yeah, it's only one. But I know what our biggest position of need is right now, and that is center. We literally don't want, we don't have one on the roster. But the question is, are any of these centers good? This guy actually looks really good. Hey, he's not that strong though. He's a really good pass blocker, but he isn't that strong. How about Kennedy? Uh, Kennedy's ratings are worse, but he's a little stronger. I think Gizzy's better, plus Gizzy's a funny name. Is there like a good guard here though? There's Alan Rodriguez, but he doesn't look that good. Eh. I think the centers are better. Okay, yeah, let's go with Tony Gizzy out of Iowa State. I don't think he's great, but he's, I think, our best option. So let's take him here. Normal dev, as I kind of expected, but he might be decent. We'll have to see. But I think that's the only pick I'm going to show here. So I will see y'all for the draft recap. Okay, wait. This draft was like really good. Surprisingly, I didn't think we would be able to get anyone good, but I took these first three picks right here. I didn't even make this running back pick, but he looks good. Only normal dev, but Gerald Roundtree looks good. But we actually did really well. Tony Gizzy, or <laughs> Jizzy, <laughs> probably shouldn't call him that. Fucking Jizzy Drake or something. Which by the way, that new Drake album was awful. <laughs> That shit genuinely like put me to sleep. But I'll just call him Gizzy. Gizzy looks really good. A 75 overall, I wish he had a dev trait, but for the third round, I'm not gonna complain about that. That's a pretty good steal. And then Zeke Hewitt, this corner, I didn't show me picking him. He is 
Oh my god, I thought that said 6'3", 156 pounds. But still, 186 for 6'3 is really light. But the reason I picked him is because he had, I think it said B press. It's only a 71 though. And then he had C man and C zone. And he had like 4, 3, 4 speed or something like that, which is only a 93. So his ratings were disappointing, but he still looks okay. And then Gerald Taylor also looks pretty good. 70 overall with hidden dev in what the fifth round we'll take that oh and i did take this guy actually floyd callahan i remember because he has 99 speed too an 80 deep route 78 spec catch literally like nothing else he's awful at everything else but those traits are pretty good so we'll take it i don't even know if he's gonna make the team but it was a sixth round pick i wanted to take a flyer so all things considered that felt like a really good draft but here's a look at the team heading into i think year six of the rebuild we're getting there. We're past halfway at this point, and we are finally looking really good. We're up to an 88 overall, 92 offense. Our offense has not been the problem. It has been this defense, which still isn't great at an 84, but it's the best we've had, I think, which is a little sad to say. It's just, you know, I'm going to make this excuse all the time. We got unlucky, but we did. We, we've been really unlucky, actually. <laughs> But finally, we did add some players this offseason with Joey Bosa and Kevin James. I guess no no other starters here. We did also add Uchenna Nwosu, but he's going to be a backup here, but a really good backup. I mean, imagine the group of Joey Bosa, Matt Judon, Chenna Nwosu, and a young 86 overall pass rusher. I guess that would be like having Montez Sweat or something in real life. Like, that would be an insane group. I guess the Chargers had at least half of that for a while with Bosa and Nwosu, but Nwosu wasn't nearly as good there as he has been with Seattle anyways. Obviously, there were some changes on our offense too. We added Gizzy at center, and then we traded for Devontae Smith, so hopefully he can do well. I don't even know how many touches he's going to get. I guess it's been our number two receiver getting the most touches every year, which is weird, but we'll try to get Devontae Smith a lot of catches. We'll see. But let's get to the midseason point of year six and hopefully we can do well. Okay, well, at the midseason point of year six, we are four and three. That's not bad at all. I honestly thought we would be a lot better though. <laughs> Cause I mean, look at the Texans right here. They're an 85 overall, but they're six and one. We're an 88 overall and we're four and three. Again, overall doesn't matter in this game for whatever reason. It's just all about traits and <laughs> playbooks and all that we are tied for the best roster in the nfl to the 49ers and ravens both have an 88 which i'm surprised i'm surprised we're not like the best roster in the nfl by a couple overall but we are at least tied for it yet we're only four and three i guess we're doing better than the ravens though they're only two and five again overall doesn't matter for whatever reason but we have i i checked this we have a lot of re-signings. Rashawn Rice, I think, is the big one. Or, well, oh, I didn't even see Devontae Smith. <laughs> and Quentin Nelson. And Joey Bosa. We only have 89 mil to work with. Um... How are we going to do this? How are we going to survive? Let's start with Rashawn Rice. We'll go player friendly, five years, 72 mil, and he takes that. Cool. Marvin Dowling, if we lose him, that he's like the player I'm least worried about. He's not even doing that well in a contract year. Well, I guess he's not a starter right now. So I guess three sacks and probably 250-ish snaps is probably, that's pretty good. So I guess he is playing well based on his per snap like sack count, but that's because he's in a contract year so I'm good <laughs> and then Xavier Rogers we definitely want back four years 44 mil he resigns Devontae Smith four years 70.8 mil more time to think it over that's fine <laughs> I still hate that message, but that's fine. Alani Copeland, he's been good. Three years, 35.4 mil, and he resigns. And we're definitely going to have to um, restructure some contracts at the end of the year because we also have Braden Smith. Yikes. <laughs> and we have the legend, Matt Gay. We need him back. Kurt Buckley, if he was interested, then I would, but right now we just do not have the money to bring him back. Least important position on the O-line, too. And I think we'll bring Nelson and Bosa back at the end of the year once we once they regress a little bit. So now, that's all there is for us to do, so let's get to the end of, end of the year, and I hope we can make the playoffs. We deserve to. <laughs> okay, well, here we are at the end of year number six, and again, y'all know why we're here. Of course, be sure to 
like and subscribe and all that good stuff if you haven't already but go follow me on twitter link in the description i've been po like posting there a little bit lately a little bit more i should say so go follow me there if you want to see me be angry about football and how the seahawks are doing probably that's what like 90 percent of my tweets are or like 50 whatever but this team is looking very nice we're up to an 89 overall which is probably the best in the nfl now finally it only took us having to pull off some crazy trades but we finally did it but in year number six we finished 14 and 3 our best season by far now our defense was actually good i switched to the bills defensive playbook i think yeah, the Bills. And our offense was obviously amazing, as it has been. The best scoring offense in the NFL, but let's check out our season stats. Anthony Richardson, 4,500 yards, almost 4,600, 36 touchdowns, 9 picks, 74% completion percentage. His lowest touchdown amount in a few years, but this is maybe his best year in a while, just all things considered, like the completion percentage and all that. He was really good. God damn. Damn, okay, Jonathan Taylor, about 1,750 yards, 6.3 yards per carry, 24 touchdowns, good lord. Devontae Smith, almost 1,200 yards, 9 touchdowns, Rashawn Rice, 1,100 yards, 13 touchdowns, not much from JSN, Jonathan Taylor had more receiving yards than JSN, that's not great, I would, I, I wish they went to JSN, but whatever. And the blocking was pretty good, Buckley wasn't great at right guard, but everyone else was fine, Raymond still meh but Tony Gizzy as a rookie was probably our best lineman, or Braden Smith. And on defense, Jermaine Cadet led the team with 113 tackles, tackles for loss, 14 for Bosa, 11 for James, and sacks. Oh my, whoa, hold on. Matt Judon got 16 sacks? How many snaps did he play? Only 600? I wish we played him for a full season then. Why? Where did that come from? I mean, we'll take it, but why? <laughs> I wish, like... I wish Dowling did that so he could actually, like, develop, but he got five and a half sacks and 500 snaps, which is good, we'll take that, but that's not the 16 that Matt Judon got. But 12 and a half from Joey Bosa, he was good. 10 for Kevin James, he was really good. Our D-line was amazing this year, which has been our biggest problem. And then interceptions, still not a ton, but three for Matt Milano, two for Xavier Rogers, and then one for a few players, totaling only nine, I think. Still not great, but... <laughs> MVP here goes to Dennis Barber on the Denver Broncos. I was just talking about how, like, generated players never win awards here, and Madden immediately has to prove me wrong, of course. But Anthony Richardson at number five, Jonathan Taylor at number six. I saw Deshaun Watson on the Dolphins, Jordan Love on the Vikings, who was awful last night. I mean, granted, a lot of his offense is injured, and it wasn't even that great to begin with, and they were going up against a pretty good defense in the Raiders, so, I don't know, I had a lot of faith for him going into the year, and he definitely hasn't been great. But Offensive Player of the Year obviously goes to Jonathan Taylor. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Miles Garrett. Joey Bosa at 7. Matt Judon down at 8. I thought he would be more up here. But I guess he didn't get, like, all the tackle numbers or whatever, because he was mostly just a rotational guy. Offensive Rookie of the... Oh, Dennis Barber was a rookie? <laughs> And won M he won MVP as a rookie, okay. But we have Gerald Roundtree, I think that's the running back the CPU took. And then Kenny Witherspoon for the Patriots wins Defensive Rookie of the Year, no Colts. What do you, hold on, I wanna see what the Broncos QB did, cause Anthony Richardson was really good and he was all the way down at five. Did this guy have like 45 touchdowns? 46, okay, 4,500 yards, 46 touchdowns, six picks, 69% completion percentage, nice. Didn't do anything in the run game, but yeah, I see why he won MVP. <laughs> But of course, now in the playoffs, let's see who we're going to be taking on in the divisional. It's going to be the 9-8 Las Vegas Raiders, a team I was just talking about. We have an upgrade for Xavier Rogers, though. We'll take it. Up to an 88 now, a 91 with morale. I wonder who the Raiders QB is now. They had that one 79 overall guy. I'm sure he's developed if they still have him. I think it was Randy, or was it Roy Peterman? Which one was it? It might have been Allman. I don't know. Why do they have two good QBs? Make up your mind. No, it was definitely Peterman because he's from Boise State. I remember that. Why did they add this guy? It looks like they signed him out of free agency. Gotta love that CPU draft logic. Makes a lot of sense. Or just logic in general. But anyways, I can't wait to lose to the Raiders. It's gonna be super fun. So let's see what happens this week.
Okay, no, we do thankfully win 31 to 21. We were the much better team, so I would hope so, but you never know. Upgrade for Marvin Cheeks here, you love to see it. Won't be Cheeks anymore pretty soon. But we are gonna be taking on the 13 and four, but only 84 overall Buffalo Bills here in the conference championship. We have five overall on them. Ah, it's gonna be so nice when we lose this game. <laughs> the other, oh God, the other conference championship teams, the ones for the NFC are the Lions at nine and eight, in the Panthers at 10 and 7. I'm sure they're each an 82 overall. But anyways, let's simulate this game out and let's see if we can miraculously get a win. We get the same score twice in a row, 31 to 21. Okay, that's weird. But we are going to be moving on to the Super Bowl here. Upgrade for Marvin Dowling there too, we'll take it. And the Panthers do have a better team than I thought, but they're still only an 85 overall. And they had the 29th offense in the NFL and they still made the Super Bowl. Okay. <laughs> Their defense was amazing. It was number two for points per game, but I don't know if defense can win championships when your offense is that bad. I'll say that. But we have a good amount of upgrades here. Maybe some awards? I mean, I doubt all those players got awards. Taylor definitely did, obviously, but I also want to see if we hit any dev traits. I think this is the week we get them, right? Maybe not. I don't see any new ones. Oh, yeah, it is. Matt Milano got X Factor. We'll take that. I think that was the only one, unless I'm stupid, which probably, but yeah, that was the only one. But we have a Super Bowl media day. We're obviously going to jump in and watch the Super Bowl simulate, but we will go just the beginning for this. This definitely isn't everything. We still have a few more years. I'm sure we're going to disappoint every year, but we should be good enough to make the Super Bowl every year. But let's jump in against the Panthers and let's watch what happened. I feel like it's never good luck when I jump in, but we'll see. Dude, I miss bullying the faces right here. Now it's just a black screen. A train went by at like the worst possible time, but here we are in the Super Bowl watching the coin toss, I guess. I don't care. Let's just simulate this thing out. So let's jump to the end of the game and let's see what happens here. They go up early 3-0, but we get a touchdown to make it 7-3. They were driving, but it looks like they turned it over and we got a touchdown. We're up 14-3. Make that 21-3. We're Smoking them early here, 28 to three. Oh God, that's that's a bad Super Bowl score and they're coming back immediately. But we make it 35 to 13 and they do not score again as we absolutely destroy the Panthers in the Super Bowl, 35 to 13. So this rebuild is now officially a success. Anthony Richardson's hair was spazzing out there. Everyone's is kinda, but this rebuild started off fairly unlucky, but we definitely turned it around. And we still have like four more years of this to go so we'll have to see how many rings we can win and let's see who won Super Bowl MVP I'm sure there's some way to tell when the Super Bowl's happening no you can't do it there you have to go to the next week or like when the celebrations happening but I don't know who to look for in the last game it would just say like this was the Super Bowl MVP it would show them but not in this one but MVP goes to Anthony Richardson beautiful but now let's get into the offseason and this is where this team might fall apart a little bit. I do see a lot of cap freed up right now, so I kind of think some players might have retired, which would make sense going out with a Super Bowl win, but hopefully not too many. We are still in 90 overall though, so I would guess it was Matt Judon. I don't see any retirements on offense. I was thinking it could be Quentin Nelson, but yeah, Matt Judon did retire, but that's it. I'm surprised we have as much cap as we do. But now for the rest of the players that we have to re-sign. God, there are definitely some good ones here. I would say both Bosa might be our most important one, maybe. We'll try one year at 19 mil, and he doesn't take it. Uh, we're gonna tag him, obviously, but but now I think we're gonna have to restructure some contracts. Can I even do that right now? Will that even do anything? <laughs> Ooh, no, I can't. Um, I don't know if we're gonna be able to get Devontae Smith back. Or, wait, yeah, we can. Damn, that saved 19.3 mil. <laughs> restructuring Anthony Richardson's. I'm shocked Kevin James didn't get superstar though. He was a stud, but we freed up like a good amount of money here. So assuming it has an effect right now, which it does, thankfully, we should be able to bring some other players back. He said he was fine with this last time. He just wanted to think it over a little bit. I might bump it a tiny bit and he does take it. Okay, cool. Or not even think it over, just that he didn't want to take it right now, which obviously annoys me every time. But Braden Smith, we definitely want back to two years um 
I'm worried we won't have enough for Quentin Nelson, but two years 37 mil and he re-signs that, he accepts it. Shaq Peoples, oh that's a fifth year, uh, I don't want to pick up that. 21 mil for an 83 overall corner here, no thanks. <laughs> Quentin Nelson has, isn't as expensive as I thought he would be, so I think we are going to be able to get pretty much everyone I want back, which is nice. So two years, 43.2 mil, and he re-signed. I don't know how we did that, but we did. <laughs> Thank the Lord for restructuring in this game. We just pretty much just did what the Saints do every year in real life. So now we're going to need a new right guard and a new corner, but that was like best case scenario, and a new linebacker. But those are like not the most important positions and we might be able to restructure the contracts we just signed we'll see was that a thing you can do in this game i think it is uh maybe not oh wait no peoples is still here i'm stupid i keep thinking that was a re-signing but no it was just the fifth year but no we can't restructure any of those but we do for some reason have a little bit of money to work with i don't know where that 17 mil even came from Oh, we could get Dowling. Well, there are a lot of teams interested in him, so I don't think we're going to be able to bring him back. Daniil Hunter's here. How good has he been? I haven't really noticed him up there for awards. He's been all right. We still have Chen and Uosu, so we're, like, fine there. I... Should we... Should we try to re-sign Marvin Dowling? I mean, it doesn't seem like a good idea. No, it's not a good idea. The most sacks he's had in a year is seven and a half. I'm not gonna do that. I don't know what I'm talking about. Who's Ralph Donaldson? Is he good? Well, he's about as good as Dowling has been but he would be a lot cheaper. Oh, there are teams really interested in him. Okay, never mind. Okay, these are the two players we're gonna go for here. It's gonna be Jamin Davis. He's super interested and not very expensive. And at an 83 overall, he would make a really good number two linebacker. And then we're gonna go for Stefan Woods, an X-Factor safety here. I'm gonna see what his overall is at corner. And we might just trade Shaq Peoples, depending on his stats. I can't remember how good he's been. He's gotten five picks and had decent pass deflections, but this last year, no picks, only five pass deflections. That's not great. And even if we don't move that guy to corner, I'd rather future-proof, like, safety than not do it, I guess, because safety was a problem for us to begin with. So we'll see if we can get these two players. They both sign. I have a feeling we got Davis, obviously, but I don't know about... No, we did get Stefan Woods. Okay, we'll take it. So nobody, like, crazy, obviously, but those were probably like two of the best players available so I guess that was pretty good. Also Jalen Hurts is still just sitting here at a 98 overall. I don't know how the Eagles let him hit the open market but that's the CPU logic. But now let's get to the draft. Okay we are trading Shaq Peoples and Nick Peoples to the Cardinals for a two, a four, and a seven. I was just gonna trade Shaq Peoples, but you know, the trade didn't fully go through. So I added Nick Peoples and a couple extra picks from the Cardinals. So they are getting, they're getting two Peoples on defense. The Peoples brothers are staying together, I guess. <laughs> Definitely not related, but you know what? We can pretend they are in this world. They're brothers. We'll say that. We'll keep them together on the Cardinals until they probably cut one of them. We actually have a lot of contracts coming up this year, though. Chenna Nwosu, Josh Downs, Bernard Raymond, Jonathan Taylor, Joey Bosa. Yikes. Um, I was just trying to look for players we might trade away, but I don't know. All these players are kind of necessary. Maybe not downs though, but I don't want to trade an original Colts player, so I don't think I'm gonna. But anyways, now let's get to the draft. But here in the draft, we of course do not pick until number 32. And I'm not sure what I want to do here. I'm kind of leaning towards Isaiah Rutherford, just so we have like someone to develop at linebacker, but he's not good in coverage. He's good at everything else, but just not coverage. It's either him I guess we could go with like a center. We do need a right guard. Not this guy though, he doesn't look great. Oh, Brandon Johnston does look pretty good though. We might go with him. There is also DeAndrew Sheldon. Eh, he's not very strong though, but his ratings are pretty nice. Except the block shedding, his block shedding isn't very good either. He does look pretty good other than that though. And you know, we might expect Nuosu and Bosa to be gone at the end of the year. So yeah, let's go with DeAndrew Sheldon here. Hidden Dev, 85 strength, 79 speed. I don't know if he's great. I feel like he'll probably only be like a 72-ish overall. He could be a little higher or a little lower. I don't know, but I like the pick. And then just five picks later, it looks like Johnston did go. That's fine though. John Jones looks solid. Ooh, Dalton Carter has amazing strength. 
strength, but his ratings aren't quite as good, but the strength is really good. I might take him anyways. Yeah, I think he is gonna be the pick. Let's go with Dalton Carter out of Penn State. Hidden Dev, 93 strength. I thought that would be a little higher, but it's good either way. <sighs> I don't know if he's gonna be as good as I thought he was. I'm just always confused by like the ratings it gives players based off their combine. But he still should be a good player. I just I just thought he would have a higher strength rating. <laughs> and now we have a starter for like every position. There isn't much we can upgrade. So last pick that I'm gonna take here, that one linebacker did unfortunately go. Let's just go with Tracy McCain because he looks pretty good. A lot of A's. Has really bad run block finesse and maybe not great run block power, but I guess he's decently strong. I almost wonder if Tyrone Wright is better because he's stronger. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. They're going to be a backup anyways. Let's just go with Tracy McCain. Hidden Dev only 83 strength though, but his ratings looked really good. But anyways, that's it for this draft and let's get to the draft recap and see how we did. Okay, we did really well in the draft again. DeAndrew Sheldon is actually a 74 overall with Hidden. He actually does look pretty good. Obviously won't get much playing time year one, but should eventually, maybe as soon as next year. And it looks like he probably was the best option for the D-line for that pick. There's a 75 defensive tackle, but we obviously didn't need defensive tackle. I don't see like any other <laughs> defensive ends or outside. There's a 75 outside linebacker right here. He's a run stopper though. He looks good. But you know what? I'm gonna be honest. I don't know if I've seen a player higher than a 79 in the drafts this entire rebuild. <laughs> Michael Donahue, a 79 tight end, is the best player here. But anyways, Dalton Carter is a 75. He looks like a really good player. Looks like he was a good pick. And Tracy McCain, also a very good pick. Almost as good of an overall at a 74. What would he be at tackle? I mean, he's only 6'3", but he's a pass protector type. He'd be a 73. Okay, that's what I figured. And then I took these couple picks right here. Neither of them were great, though, but I just wanted depth there. And then I just simulated the rest of this out. The CPU got an all right defensive end 69 overall nice I mean he was an outside linebacker but I moved him to defensive end but pretty good draft all things considered so I'm happy with it and let's get into year number seven but here's a look at the team heading into year seven really similar to last year just we added Dalton Carter on offense no more Buckley whatever his first name was I'm so bad with the generated player names but Carter looks good has a lot more upside than Buckley did, obviously, so I like that. And then on defense, we added Jamin Davis. Also, I found this Bradley guy in free agency who's only a 71 middle linebacker, but he has 77 finesse moves and is a 77 at outside linebacker. I think we're eventually going to move him down to defensive end. I definitely want to re-sign him just to have him. Something I noticed in this game is a lot of the middle linebackers have like too high of finesse moves. So like you move, I think it was someone like, I think I did it with Chad Muma. I moved him to outside linebacker and he went up to like a 73 speed rusher. Like that was his main archetype. I don't know why that's a thing, but whatever. <laughs> I guess it's not that big of a deal, but it's still weird. Oh, and also in free agency, I found Zach Thomas. He was a safety and I moved him to corner. He's only 25 with a star dev, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, the team as a whole is looking really good. A 90 overall. We'll have to see how much it can develop this year. We'll see. 93 offense, 87 defense. This offense is insane. It is getting older though, for sure. But it is still very good. But with that, let's get to the midseason point of year 7. And we'll see what we can do. Okay, well, we are 5-2 at the midseason point of year 7, and we have a breakout QB here. We'll see if we can hit that, as I always do it. If we hit it, I'll show it. If we don't, then I just won't show it, obviously. <laughs> but we'll see if we can hit that. I think it gives him, like, 20,000 XP or something like that. One or fewer interceptions and 400 yards, or four total touchdowns. That doesn't seem, like, too crazy hard to hit, but, well, kinda. We'll see. And then, of course, we are going to have a decent amount of players to re-sign here. The question is, how much money are we going to have? Oh, <laughs> oh, um, well, that's tough. Negative seven million. Hmm, 
So maybe no more Josh Downs. I want Jonathan Taylor back. I mean, he's the whole point of this rebuild. And I want Joey Bosa back, but he might he might retire anyways. But Nuosu and Raymond are also here as I, you know, showed. I just didn't think we would be negative in the cap. So we will figure something out at the end of the year, hopefully. <laughs> I'm sure we can get at least like one or two of those guys back, but yeah, that's definitely tough. So let's get to the end of the year and I'll see if we hit the breakout, but if not, I will see y'all in the playoffs. Okay, he he did, 15,000 XP. I didn't think he would hit that, but I saw we got 35 points, so uh, we'll take it. But at the end of year number seven, we finish 14 and three once again. We unfortunately lose in week 18 to the Titans. We almost went undefeated for the rest of the year. But where does a 91 rank in the NFL? I'm guessing it's first, but how much is it first by? I see the Ravens still had an 87 or an 88 back there. The Falcons also have an 88. That's interesting. The Cowboys also have an 88. And then there's us at a 91. The Chiefs also have an 88. There are some high rated teams here. The Broncos also have an 88. But yeah, we're literally three overall higher than anybody in the NFL. We arguably should have been undefeated, but I'll take 14 and three. But let's check out our season stats real quick. Oh my God. Anthony Richardson is still getting better every year. 4,900 yards, 47 touchdowns, eight picks, 73% completion percentage. Might we finally see his first MVP season? Hopefully, but you never know. Jonathan Taylor was like a little worse this year, but still 1,500 yards, 5.2 per carry, 15 touchdowns. He was still a monster. Devontae Smith, 1,300 yards, 17 touchdowns. Rashawn Rice, is he like on pace to be the best tight end of all time? I mean, yeah, he's had a... <laughs> he's averaged like 1,100 yards every year, or like almost 1,100 yards. That's insane. And like 11 or 12 touchdowns per year. He's crazy. And then Josh Downs, 900-ish yards. JSN didn't do much, but he might next year if we lose Josh Downs. The blocking was amazing, except for Bernard Raymond, but we might be letting him go. He hasn't been that bad. I've had a lot worse. But Smith, Braden Smith has been so good. Dalton Carter and Gizzy, all three of them were really good. And then Jermaine Cadet led the team with 134 tackles, tackles for loss, 14 for Bosa and James, and then sacks, 11 and a half for Bosa, nine and a half for Nuosu, seven and a half for Sheldon as a rookie. We'll take that. Only five and a half for Kevin James, though. The sacks were definitely down this year, unfortunately. Ooh, only three. Three total interceptions. Our defense as a whole was worse this year. One for Rodgers, Ray, and Copeland. Yikes. But our offense was so dominant that it didn't matter, and Anthony Richardson does finally get an MVP. Barely beating out Dak Prescott, apparently, who has a 25,000 legacy score. Good lord. Does anyone honestly care about legacy score, though? Like, I almost never check it. I mean, I notice it, but, like, I don't really think much of it. But Offensive Player of the Year still goes to Jonathan Taylor in like arguably his weakest season in a while here and Anthony Richardson at number two and Devontae Smith at top three we top three offensive player of the year Rashawn Rice at number seven our offense was like that might be the best offense I've ever had actually that was insane our defense was kind of another story though defensive player of the year goes to Max Crosby Joey Bosa at number eight offensive rookie of the year goes to Josh Mackey for the Chiefs and defensive rookie of the year goes to DeAndre Drew Sheldon, who won it as a backup. So we'll take that. I wonder what his dev trait is. Probably just star, because I didn't see him get many upgrades throughout the year. But either way, with Defensive Rookie of the Year, he should go up to Superstar, hopefully. Yeah, just star, unfortunately. But we'll see what kind of upgrades he gets after the year. Unfortunately, Carter only has star as well. I, I was kind of thinking he would have Superstar, but unfortunately not. And then, what other hiddens did we have? We had, I think, Vickers. He only had star, but that's to be expected. Oh yeah, I never mentioned this, but Patton, Julius Patton, he's still only 23, damn, but he had Superstar Dev. He has 90 deep route running, 99 speed. We could honestly just put him in as the replacement for Josh Downs and be fine, I think. Because it's not like we go to the third receiver much anyways. So I think that'll be the strat there. Because we're not going to have any money. <laughs> 
free agency is going to be like out of the question. Or is that the saying? I don't know. Either way, I think that'll be the plan for the offseason. But we're not there yet. We are in the playoffs. And let's see who we're going to be taking on in the divisional. It's going to be the 9-8, and eight, but 87 overall Baltimore Ravens. I thought there were, they were an 88. Oh, yeah. For some reason, teams like whenever you're playing a team, it shows them as a different overall than when you're not playing them. I don't know why that is, but it's a thing for some reason. Lamar wasn't very good this year. 3,300 yards, 25 touchdowns, 11 picks. I mean, that's not great. Maybe I'm just used to seeing Anthony Richardson, but... <laughs> Yeah, no, that's not that's not amazing. But anyways, let's see if we can get a win. And we we get upset in the divisional by a nine and eight team, four overall lower than us. Now five overall lower. We're an eighty two or a ninety two. I love this game. It's great. But in the Super Bowl, the Falcons take down the Ravens twenty one to thirteen. Is that their first ever Super Bowl? I don't know. It might be. Because, yeah, I think the Super Bowl they choked was going to be their first. I don't know. But we have three upgrade points here for DeAndrew Sheldon. I'm going to assume he got Superstar. I'm going to hope he got Superstar. I think it's a guarantee to get a dev up when you win Defensive Rookie of the Year, right? Or at least from star to Superstar. Okay, yeah, he does have an ability slot. He got Superstar. Now up to an 80. He looks great. And also upgrades for Anthony Richardson, Devontae Smith for them winning awards. I'm going to assume Smith won best receiver because he was the number three for offensive player of the year. And the only players ahead of him were two of our players. That was such an insane season. I have no idea how we lost in the divisional. <laughs> I guess our defense just wasn't good, which it wasn't, but it should have been better. But we have some re-signings to make, obviously, and we have negative 21 mil in cap. Um... <laughs> Let's see if we can work some restructures here. Good lord. Oh, yeah, we can. Whoa, that saves 20 mil. Okay. This team is getting really expensive, though. Dog, the restructures are so cheesy in this game, but, I mean, that's a thing you can do in real life. That's, again, what the Saints do, like, every year. They're, like, negative 50 mil in cap, and then they somehow afford to sign decent players by the end of it. So, I mean, we're, we're just doing the Saints strategy, but obviously we want Jonathan Taylor back. We will offer him two years. 28 mil and he resigns thankfully and now we only have 14 mil to work with who do we want back the most out of any of these guys i'm gonna say joey bosa i feel like i've been calling him nick bosa but yeah i think joey bosa is the one we want back one year 12 mil we'll see if he'll take it and he does okay cool because i know he rejected us last year but this year he does take it thankfully and we will accept the fifth year for jimmy ray that's not too much but we're gonna be losing josh downs chen and Uosu, and Bernard Raymond. Bernard Raymond is low-key the one I'm most concerned about, because even though he's been our worst lineman, I've still had tackles that are better do a lot worse than he has, so I don't know. I kind of want Matt Bradley back too. Is there a way? Okay, he doesn't accept. Whatever, that's fine. <laughs> Let's get into the offseason, and I guess we'll just get straight to the draft. I actually do have a trade in mind, but it might be a little controversial, so I don't know if I want to do it. Nah, I'm not going to do it. Never mind. Okay, well, in the draft, we pick at number 20. Eight, the Patriots have the number one pick here. I feel like they've had a lot of number one picks. They're just not very good here, apparently. And they haven't been in real life, so I guess that's realistic. That was probably the team I was the most wrong on heading into the year. I just thought they would get a lot better not having Matt Patricia anymore, but <laughs> apparently not. But we obviously need a left tackle. That's probably our biggest need. There are some good looking ones here. I think we might go with Alex Beaver though. Looks well-rounded and has elite strength. It'll probably only be like an 84 or something. No, it'll probably be like a 91, maybe a 92, but he looks good. Only 21 years old out of Ohio State. Looks like a good pass blocker too. So let's take him here to be our new left tackle. He does have 92 strength. Hidden Dev... That feels like a good pick, even though he's not a scheme fit, but who cares? We could honestly put Braden Smith at left tackle if we wanted to. I kind of trust him more. We'll see. That might not be a terrible idea. We'll see. And now... I guess we could go for a receiver. The question is, which one looks good? None of them do. Um, well, Travis Randolph looks okay, but I don't know if he's good enough to take here. Why are there so- I've seen so many Rudolphs and Randolphs throughout the rebuild. Why? Why are there so many? Don't give a BJ to Rudolph, though. That's- that's messed up. What the hell? Okay, I honestly don't know what to do here. All the good-looking pass rushers are gone, as they usually are past the first round in this game. Rayshon Brown looks maybe okay, but- but also his pursuit isn't good and his finesse moves. Isn't. Like, if there's going to be a good pass rushing outside linebacker,
attacker. You want to look for A finesse moves or power moves, whichever type they are. He is fast though. I don't know. We, I don't, he doesn't look that good though. I might take a chance if there's nobody else that looks good, but I checked our upcoming contracts for the year and it is literally our entire offensive line, except for, I guess, the rookie that we're drafting right now. And then I guess our right guard, but honestly, none of these linemen look good just based off their strength, which, you know, there are, <laughs> there are good linemen sometimes that aren't just pure strength, but I don't have any of them scouted here. So I don't know if they're good based off of that. I think John Saxton might be solid. I don't know if he's great. We do already have a fifth good line or a sixth good lineman though so i don't know if we need to go with him he looks all right though i mean i don't know what we're gonna do if we don't go with him so let's go with john saxton here normal dev unfortunately but 90 strength is good the jumping and excel are good for whatever that's worth he looks solid and then there is one more player i want to pick assuming he doesn't get taken and that is I think he did get taken. No, it's TJ Colbert out of Penn State. He had 46 bench reps <laughs> and he has a player rec, possibly good awareness. He's not much of a pass rusher though. Most of his ratings don't look good, but I like the strength. And I also saw that like all of our defensive tackle contracts are coming up except for uh, Kevin James. So let's go with TJ Colbert. Hidden Dev, 99 strength. I feel like I've gotten so many 99 and 98 ratings in this rebuild. And there's one more, so we'll take it. Okay, well, we had an all right draft. Just Alex Beaver isn't as good as I thought he would be. Hold on, how tall is John Saxton? He's 6'4". Oh, he doesn't have a dev trait, though. Never mind, I forgot about that. I was gonna say, we could maybe move Beaver inside to guard, because he's 6'4", 328. He probably does go up if we move him to guard. Yeah, he does up to a 73. But I want someone at tackle that has a dev trait, because Saxton would probably go down to a 72, and we would just be basically losing a dev trait there. <laughs> was there a better option at tackle, though? <laughs> like, could I have gone with someone different? Probably. But once again, it looks like there is nobody even better than a 78 here. So really only three players better than a 76. That's insane. Johnny or Jamie Jenkins would have been nice, but he went before our pick. Oh, Cameron Walls, this guard right here would have been better. I didn't even see him for some reason. And there was another 72 tackle here. So for tackles, I think we might have gotten the best one. There was another 72 tackle here. There was another 72 tackle. So I guess we got tied for the best tackle. And then TJ Colbert is is a 73 he looks really good obviously with the 99 strength hidden dev and then i i think i took dyson yeah i took tight took Dyson and then I simulated the rest out. He's okay, 70 overall. The CPU didn't get anybody, unfortunately. But overall, okay draft. I wish we did better, but let's get into year number eight. Okay, well, here we are heading into year number eight and we're still looking good even though we lost some players. We're at an 89 overall and we're gonna try McCain at left tackle. Obviously, he was a rookie last year. Again, I don't know how I feel about a 6-3 tackle, but there have been some that work, so. You never know. He's just a better player than the other options we have. Plus, he's an actual scheme fit at left tackle. So, you know, we'll see what happens there. And Patton is finally going to get a starting opportunity after three years. He might actually do a lot because I think Downs was producing decently well in the slot or as the number three. I don't think we're going to start him as the slot, but like as the number three. And then on defense, it is mostly the same. No more Nwosu. We have Sheldon there who obviously won defensive rookie of the year, but everything else on defense is the same, I think. It looks like at least. So yeah, we're looking good still. Our defense is actually up to an 88 overall now. Our offense is a 91. But let's get to the midseason point of year eight and let's see how we're doing. Hopefully we can have a little bit more cap space pretty soon though. We'll see. Oh, okay. Well, we're having our worst season in a while, unfortunately. And it looks like it's our defense, unsurprisingly. Number 29 in the NFL for points allowed. That's not great we have one takeaway on the season yikes <laughs> We're doing all right with sacks, but I don't know. That's that's not great. And we have some re-signings, a few of them on the defensive side of the ball. And I don't think they're really uh, making their case to be re-signed with Luke Toll, Brian Branch, and I guess Jamin Davis. But we only have 12 mil to work with anyways. Luke Toll hasn't done anything, but it's because he's more of a power rusher and we have a, <laughs> we have a speed rush defensive tackle scheme and he has 48 finesse moves, so. 
I think you can imagine that he's like a 60-ish overall there. I think he's like a 62. So he's not exactly getting any, getting any playing time there. But I don't know. I want Quentin Nelson back. I wonder if we should trade these guys away. Because we're not doing well anyways. Maybe this will be our like mini blow the team up year. Because we're broke and we're not doing well. And these are a lot of older players here. Joey Bosa, how's he doing? He's doing all right, but this could very well be his last year. So we are going to trade him away, I think. To what team, though, is the question? Oh, that went through easier than I expected. We get a two, a three, and a four for Joey Bosa. We'll take it. And I would guess we could get a decent amount for Luke Toll, because he is a superstar and still only like 25. Damn, they have an X-Factor third string defensive tackle. <laughs> I wonder if we could, like, get him. That's eh, a crazy trade. That won't go through, obviously. No team is, like, in a dire need of a defensive tackle. I think I need to lower my XP sliders for defensive tackle. All right, well, we're also getting a two, a three, and a five for Luke Toll. So we're adding a lot of good picks here. Brian Branch hasn't had an interception in two years, and he only had one. So yeah, he's gone. He he hasn't been great. Ooh, that is closer than I thought it would be. Okay. Okay, we're trading Brian Branch and Jeff Dent, just some depth linebacker, for a first round pick from the Jets. This isn't, I like to do my rebuilds realistic for the most part, but clearly this isn't realistic right here. <laughs> but it's fun, so we're doing it. And we are trading Jamin Davis to the Bears for a two, a four, and a six. We're gonna have to re-sign somebody here. You know what? What if we trade Quentin Nelson away? <laughs> Cause we can't afford him anyways. What if we trade him away and then try to re-sign him in the off season? <laughs> that might be a little bit cheesy, but you know, I could see whatever team we trade him to just not re-signing him because Madden logic there's no way that's close really <laughs> two first round picks uh we'll take that I probably could have even gotten a little more but even that seems cheesy for a 34 year old guard let's just see how overpowered we can make this team because th we're getting a crazy amount of value here Cordell Spearman we don't really need a number two running back plus he's older and needs a contract plus he would start for like half the teams in the NFL uh yeah we'll we'll let him go we get a two a three and a five from the Buccaneers for <laughs> Spearman this is insane. This is like one of the craziest things I've done in franchise. <laughs> We're just getting rid of the entire team for no reason, really. I mean, there is a reason, but like still. God, I don't want to get rid of Braden Smith. He's been so good, but we just can't afford him. Well, maybe we can at the end of the year. We'll keep him around because if we don't keep him, our offensive line is going to be undescribably bad. <laughs> I don't think I've ever used that word. I don't even know if that is a word, but we'll re-sign Julius Patton, 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 because he's pretty cheap. Four years, 22 mil, he takes it. And now we have a lot of holes to fill, pause, but I'll do that. It's not gonna be like anything major, obviously. And I'll see y'all at the end of year eight. We're gonna be like three and 14 or something. Okay, well, <laughs> despite trading like the entire team at the midseason, we somehow finish 10 and seven and make the playoffs. How? We weren't even good at the midseason and we got a million times worse yet. We somehow finished better. That That's a certified EA classic. I'll take it, but that's weird. Anthony Richardson, a down year for sure, 4444 yards, 29 touchdowns, 11 picks, but a really good completion percentage. I mean, he was good overall, but definitely his worst year in a while. Same with Jonathan Taylor, but he had 25 touchdowns, 1,350 yards, 5.1 yards per carry. Damn. Devontae Smith, 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns. Rashawn Rice, 1,000 yards, 7 touchdowns. Julius Patton was solid, and JSN was solid. Blocking, Tracy McCain wasn't great, but... You know, that's about how, that's about how Raymond was doing, so it's not really much of a downgrade there. Dalton Carter was pretty bad, though, not gonna lie. But he did get up to an 81 overall, so hopefully he'll play better in the near future. Also, Alex Beaver, I started at left guard after I traded, God, I am so bad with names in this video. The, the Colts' best guard, their best lineman, one of the best guards in the NFL. I can't think of his name because I'm fucking stupid. But Alex Beaver was an amazing replacement, only one sack allowed in 650-ish snaps. We'll take it. And then on defense, Jermaine Cadet led the team with 113 
tackles, and I traded for this Dan Hill guy from the Patriots, only 24 years old, star dev, 77 overall now, looking good. I got him for super cheap too. He was on the trade block. And then tackles for loss, 10 for Sheldon and James, and then sacks are ugly. Six for DeAndrew Sheldon, that's usually what happens with pass rushers who are good as a rookie. They absolutely suck every other year of the rebuild for some reason. Kevin James was okay. Colbert with five sacks, that's pretty good. And then I traded for this Heath Stewart guy from the Patriots. Only three sacks, and I don't know how many of those were with us, so not great there. <laughs> But interceptions, three for Copeland, two for Dan Hill, and then one for a few players. But let's check out yearly awards. MVP goes to Adam Langford for the Bears. Dak Prescott now on the Falcons, which by the way, the Falcons just traded for Van Jefferson. Can't wait for them to not use him. <laughs> That'll be fun. Offensive player of the year goes to Jonathan Taylor, though. Defensive player of the year of... <laughs> Of course it goes to Joey Bosa. Who the hell else would it go to? Joey Bosa on the Chiefs wins Defensive Player of the Year, because God, why wouldn't he? Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Cordell Thorne on the Titans, and Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Stefan Bernard, also on the Chiefs. We just made the Chiefs a powerhouse, didn't we? Well, I guess that's probably Nick Bosa. Nope, Joey Bosa's last year there. But in the playoffs, we're going to be taking on the 13-4, but only 85 overall Miami Dolphins. But we have a one last hurrah scenario. I don't know who, maybe Braden Smith? That's the only really old player I can think of. Yeah, Braden Smith. I sure hope not, but maybe. <laughs> Plus 10 morale for everybody, but sometimes if you don't, like, click on the final scenario, they don't retire, so we might not do that. We'll see. But let's see if we can take down the Dolphins here. We do have a better team, but they had a better record because EA. We'll see what happens. And we do beat them 24 to 17. We'll take it. And now we're going to be taking on the Chiefs in the divisional. They do have a better overall than us now because we traded our entire team away. But we have an upgrade for Stephon Woods here. He was definitely a good signing, up to an 85 overall now. I feel like I've done some creative stuff to get players here, more than I've done in, like, regular rebuilds. I don't know. I've had to work some shit to make this a good team, because we were getting so unlucky to begin with. Oh yeah, we still don't have a very good strong safety. I forgot about that. Oops. <laughs> oh well, that's fine. I was gonna trade for one, but there wasn't really a good one on the trade block, so I guess we're just starting cheeks. But we have a recap for the one last hurrah. Give us even more morale or whatever it gives. Please and thank you if it wants to load. Okay, there we go. Plus 10 more morale. And we have a hot opponent scenario. I guess a hot opponent that we created. I don't know if we deserve to win this game, but there is a chance, I guess, we will go. Be confident, though. Plus 10, like, everything for both teams. But let's see if we can miraculously get a win here. Probably not, though. And no, we get kind of smoked. 35 to 17. You hate to see it. But in the Super Bowl, the Falcons win another Super Bowl, of course, now that they have Dak Prescott, one of the best players in this game. <laughs> they win 41 to 26. They kind of smoke the Chiefs in Super Bowl 65. But we, of course, have some re-signings to make here. But we also have... <laughs> I think it said negative 8.7 mil to work with. 8.6, that's not ideal. Let's see if we can make some restructures happen. But literally the only player we have to re-sign after I freed up a decent amount of money is Braden Smith. So we'll offer him, I guess we'll go one year, 13 and a half mil, and he does take it. I thought I said like five mil he would ask for, but that's fine too. Also, I found this Jeff Pete guy in free agency. I actually found a good amount of players just like for pretty cheap. He was a defensive end and he was a 70 overall with star, but I moved him to defensive tackle and he went up to a 74. So I guess we'll re-sign him. He's good depth. He re-signs. He's not very expensive either. And then everyone else is just backups. I mean, Cheeks was technically a starter, but he, he was just that, Cheeks. How many times am I going to make that joke? I don't know. Apparently that's the last one because he is out of here. But let's get into free agency we might be able to get one good player here. We'll see. I definitely want to look for a safety, though. I mean, that's still been our big problem, I guess. Oh, there's definitely a good one. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to get him, though. Nah, I don't think so. That sucks, but yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to get Minka. Oh, this guy's been ass. Ooh, TJ Watt's available again, though. It looks like there are a lot of teams interested, <laughs> so I don't think that's going to happen. They lost Alex Highsmith, too. <laughs> what happened? We could go for him. I mean, he's been solid. Couldn't really be worse than what we've had there. And I think... 
I guess he's gonna be the only player we go for. I wanted a safety, but none of them look good. That could just be our position to draft, I guess. So let's see if we can get Alex Highsmith. And it looks like we do. So he'll be another Band-Aid at defensive end, but we've been needing those Band-Aids for sure. But now let's get to the draft. Dog, what has happened to the Patriots here? Apparently do not go with their playbooks. I mean, I already kind of knew that, but like, <laughs> they are awful here. But in the 2031 NFL Draft, we pick at number 17, which is pretty good. I mean, we'll have to see what we can do with that pick, but that's a pretty good pick to have. Ah, unfortunately, all of the speed rushers are gone, <laughs> and that's really the only D-line position we need. We do also need a safety though, and there are a couple decent looking ones. I think the better one is Evan Hardwick. He definitely has his flaws like coverage, but overall, I mean, good speed, good enough strength. Overall, really nice looking ratings. He'll be our strong safety, obviously. Only 21 years old. I mean, he'll probably have normal dev, but this guy looks like he'll be a good overall. Let's go with Evan Hardwick out of Wisconsin, and he does does have normal, unfortunately. That kind of sucks, but I expected it. But I think he'll be a good overall. He's actually not as fast as I thought he would be. I forgot, speed's always lower than I would expect in this game, but he still looks good enough, I hope. Oh yeah, we have back to, wait, we have back to back picks? How many firsts do we have? I thought we had two, but it looks like we have three. Um, okay, we'll take that. Where did I get a third one? I genuinely cannot remember. I know we got, two for Joey Bosa, but one of those was next year. Where did we get the other one here? Oh yeah, Quentin Nelson, that's who. Okay, I remember now. It always just takes me a minute. Ooh, this Trayvon Coleman guy looks insane. We might have to go with him, and then we would have the option of moving Woods to safety too, if we don't like how that one safety we just took looks. I mean, that's investing a lot into one position, but it could be an option. We also still do need pass rush, and Marco Orchard looks crazy. So I think he might have to be the pick here. Again, he might have normal dev. I'm not used to taking guys that look like this, but he very well could have normal. His traits look good though, his player notes. Um, none of them look negative. And I think he has like all of the good ones. So let's go with Marco Orchard out of Miami. Hidden dev. I kind of figured after I saw those traits. I didn't want to say anything though and jinx it. But yeah, A awareness, play rec, power moves, hit power. This dude looks nice. He looks really nice. And now let me just make sure there isn't anyone that I'm like forgetting. I see we have a D at right tackle. Why, why is that? We re-signed Braden Smith. Uh, I don't know. It's just being stupid, I guess. Our offensive line definitely isn't great anymore though, but I'm not sure we're really gonna solve that problem here. You know, we could go with a, uh, another corner. We really just don't need much else. We could also look for a defensive tackle or a linebacker. Dog, we almost have four first round picks. We have a super early second round pick too. But let's look at another corner. I kind of like the look of Tavares Patterson. Devin Roach looks good too, but I don't know what his man coverage is gonna be. Probably a C, cause he is listed as a zone guy. He does have good strength too, and obviously he's really fast. Huh, you know what? Uh, his press might not be good either. We're gonna go with Tavares Patterson. He looks good, 21 years old out of SMU. He's going to have normal dev. Um. Hmm. Freddie Green might not. He is the lax discipline though. Devin Roach doesn't though, but he also has bad injury. God, I don't know what to do. Let's just go with Devin Roach. He's the fastest, most exciting. Plus he's from Washington State. I don't think he's the highest overall of the three, but I think he's the highest chance of having a dev trait. Let's take him. He does have hidden. Okay, cool. 93 speed, 92 excel. 69 strength, nice. God, this Anthony Hood guy looks really good, but I wish he was a finesse rusher, not a power rusher. God, all the defensive tackles have really good power moves. Miguel Matias has really good strength too. He's really similar to the guy we look, or the guy we took last year, but maybe just a little worse. So I don't know if we need to take him. I actually don't even know what we're gonna do here at all. Jimmy Elliott, or Jeremy Elliott, I thought that said Jimmy, he looks pretty good. I feel like I've made that mistake twice where <laughs> The name is something else and I think it says Jimmy. Why do I have the name Jimmy on my mind? I don't know. He looks solid though. Let's take him here and then I think I might simulate the rest of this draft out. Let's go with Jeremy Elliott. Hidden Dev, 89 speed, 90 Excel. He looks good for sure. But I will see y'all for the draft recap. Okay, well here's how we did in the draft and honestly, I'm a little disappointed with the first few picks. Evan Hardwick is only a 77 or a 74. Oh my God, and literally two picks before 
before Najee Berry, an 80 overall hidden dev safety went. So that's not, that's not ideal. Was there like a better option than Hardwick? Probably, but like I didn't, I didn't take him obviously. Uh, Nazir Felton, but I was going for uh, run support safeties. He would have definitely been better at a 76, but I was going for the scheme and maybe I shouldn't have because that guy was not very good that I took. He was at least the better of the two that I was between though, but still not great. And then Marco Orchard, we'll see what his overall is at defensive end. He might go up to like a 75, but he'll probably stay the same. Okay, no, he does go up to 75. We'll take it. That's not a bad pick. And then Devin Roach, like I expected, not the craziest overall, but at least he has a dev trait. So I think we are going to move Woods back to safety and just have Roach be the number three corner. That sounds pretty good to me. Jeremy Elliott's only a 71. And then I took Jonathan Barton. He's only a 70. And I took JD Wolf. He is a 75. He looks really good. Had elite strength. It was only 92, which I mean, that's really good. I don't know if I would call that elite though, but <laughs> at least he is a good overall and then I simulated it after that the CPU took a good blocking tight end and a good linebacker and another solid receiver and then not much outside of that but we'll take it not bad so let's get into year number nine of the rebuild and we'll see what we can do this year but here's a look at the team heading into the second to last year of the rebuild the ninth year of the rebuild. This has been a goddamn marathon, dude. This this is taking me so long to record, but we are about there. We're up to an 88 overall this year. Not too bad after literally trading our whole team away last year. I am a little worried about the O-line, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it was good last year for sure, but sometimes when you just have a whole group that like doesn't have any superstars on it, sometimes it does worse. But I guess we didn't for the second half of last year and it still held up fine, so I don't know, we'll see. But really no other changes on offense. We have Hobson as the number two tight end. He looks really good. And then on defense, obviously some changes here. We drafted Jeremy Elliott. We moved Stephon Woods back to safety. Jalen Petrie was actually just sitting in free agency, so that's kind of a no-brainer. We we really went from having no safeties to a really stacked safety group with Copeland an 89 X Factor, Woods an 87 X Factor, Petrie an 84 X Factor, and then Hardwick a first round pick. So we're looking good there. And then Roach is going to start in the nickel, I guess. He'll be our number three. Yeah, he's a 73 slot. That'll work. And oh yeah, we added Alex Highsmith too. We added Orchard in the first round. We really overhauled this team again. <laughs> so we'll have to see if it actually works out. So let's get to the midseason point of year number nine and we'll see if it does work out okay well we are four and three at the midseason point of year nine not bad but i was hoping we could be a little better our our defense is actually better than our offense this year that's weird so what i was thinking might happen might actually be happening is our offensive line playing bad oh anthony richardson is having a season oh my god jonathan taylor's doing well but like not nearly as good as he has been doing but still well maybe that's the problem because i saw we were like 16th in rushing Ooh, tracy mccain is awful this year okay yeah that is the problem and gizzy isn't great Dalton Carter's doing really well and Braden Smith is doing all right, but McCain, yikes. I don't know, that might just have to be something we figure out after the year, but we do have other potential options there. Let's see, do we want to try, God, should we just try Braden Smith there? <laughs> um, we could try Beaver, we could try Wolf. I think we'll just try Braden Smith at left tackle. <laughs> that could go really poorly, really quick, but we'll try it out. And I guess we'll put McCain at right tackle and hope he does better there. Cause yeah, he's on pace for like 20 something sacks. Cause he already has eight through like 450 snaps. Yeah, about like 20 sacks. That's not great. But we have some re-signings to make here. Who's it gonna be? Jimmy Ray, we definitely want him back. We'll offer him four years, 45 mil and he re-signs. He's been a stud. Alani Copeland, he's been a stud too. Absolute steal from, I think the 49ers we got him from. Four years, 64 mil. That's kind of steep, but we'll take it. He's a good player. Ooh, JSN is here and he's not interested at all. And Jonathan Taylor, the team is still expensive as hell. And Alex Highsmith and Braden Smith and both our kicker and punter. God, dude, what are we gonna do? I guess we'll go... <sighs> No, let's wait until the offseason to re-sign Taylor because he'll regress. We just straight up can't afford JSN. Dan Hill's good and he's really cheap. Three years, nine mil. We're really... Okay, that's fine. I can up it a tiny bit. And Gizzy's been 
pretty good. Two years, 10 mil, he resigns. But everyone else I am not sold on, or we can just resign him at the end of the year. But speaking of the end of the year, let's get there and let's see how this team finishes once again. Okay, well, in year number nine, we finish 12 and five. We haven't missed the playoffs in, I don't know how long. We're doing really well. We only have one Super Bowl ring to our name in this rebuild, but there's not a lot I can do about that. All I can do is build a good team and hope that it plays well, but it is doing pretty well here. Just maybe not as good as it should, but Anthony Richardson is doing amazing. F almost 5,000 yards, 39 touchdowns, four picks, one of his best years so far, 75% completion percentage, 123 passer rating. Good Lord. Jonathan Taylor, 1,350 yards, 5.3% carry 14 touchdowns he did really well again even though he is like 32 years old and then 1400 yards and 16 touchdowns for Devonte smith is he becoming like one of the best receivers of all time too like damn he has one two three four five six seven seasons of 1100 yards or more and then rashawn rice is definitely one of the best tight ends of all time already 1250 yards nine touchdowns Patton did all right and jsn did all right and then the blocking um it was better than it could have been. <laughs> Braden Smith wasn't great at left tackle, but he was better than McCain. Both of them were each better at the positions we put them at, so I think that worked out pretty well. Beaver was fine, Gizzy was fine, and then Dalton Carter was really good this year. And then Jermaine Cadet led the team with 104 tackles. Tackles for loss, we had a ton. 20 from Alex Highsmith led the team. And sacks, 12 from DeAndrew Sheldon. He was very good this year. Up to an 85 now with Superstar, obviously. Alex Highsmith and and Kevin James each had eight sacks as well, and then only two from TJ Colbert, but he is 350 pounds and more of a run stopper, so that's understandable. And then interceptions still suck. Two for Roach, that was good for a rookie, but one for Rodgers, one for Ray, and one for Elliott, and that's it. Zero from our safeties that we have that much invested in. Oh my god, they were terrible. Only one pass deflection each and no picks? What the fuck? Madden, they are an 89 and an 87 overall. No, Alani Copeland's a 91 and gets one pass deflection, no picks. I love this game. Stefan Woods, 88 overall, one pass deflection, no picks. Oh, this game is so bad. It's, it's, it's insane. I can't even describe it. But Anthony Richardson wins MVP here. What a top. What a top four. Anthony Richardson, Patrick Mahomes, Jordan Love, and Deshaun Watson. All right. At least it's no Dak Prescott up there, so <laughs> could be worse, I guess. But, oh my god, we top three Offensive Player of the Year again. Anthony Richardson wins it, Taylor at two, Smith at three. What a trio we've built there. Also, how are tight ends not eligible for Offensive Player of the Year? No, I think Rice was up here last year, but he isn't this year. Also, he's confusing with Rasheed Rice. <laughs> Both are Rice. But Defensive Player of the Year goes to Max Crosby, DeAndrew Sheldon at number two. I didn't realize he would be that high up there, but I really wish he could have won it. Alex Highsmith at number seven. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Paul Thompson of the Browns. Brian Hobson at number six. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Aaron Chancellor on the Patriots. Devin Roach at number seven and Jeremy Elliott at number nine. I'm surprised Roach wasn't higher though. He was pretty good. But God, dude, I just cannot believe how bad our safeties were. But anyways, let's see who we're going to be taking on in the divisional here. The 12 and 5, 88 overall Kansas City Chiefs. We are screwed. We have the better team and we're at home, but I don't think we have a shot here. Although we do have their offensive playbook. So maybe that gives us a shot, we'll see. But I don't know, let's simulate this game out and we'll see what happens. Okay, we do unfortunately lose 35 to 28. You hate to see it, but I expected it. Oh, we have a decent amount of upgrades here. Anthony Richardson is getting close to a 99 overall. He'll be at a 98 after this. Is there a way we can like upgrade something and make that go up plus two? I'm sure there is. I don't know, we'll just spend it on strong arm though. And DeAndrew Sheldon, it looks like he did go up to X factor. That's huge. But why did he? He didn't win Defensive Rookie of the Year or Defensive Player of the Year. Maybe he won Best D-Lineman? 
Yeah, best D-lineman, D-lineman of the year. So we'll take that, that's huge. And in the Super Bowl, it's, it's the two usual suspects, the teams that do way too well in this game. The Raiders beat the Panthers 31 to 17. At least with the Cowboys, when I always complain about them, at least they have a good roster. So it makes a little bit of sense why they're good in this game, but the Panthers and the Raiders should not be as good as they are in this game. I'm sorry, they, they just shouldn't. <laughs> But of course, we still have some re-signings left. I'm gonna need to restructure some stuff here. So let's free up a little bit of money. Okay, well, we freed up a little bit of money, but not much. It will be enough to get Jonathan Taylor back. We'll try one year 12.9 mil and he resigns. I even bumped it up a tiny bit just because I was worried he wouldn't resign. I want Braden Smith back, but we won't be able to get him back. One year five mil, we don't have enough for that. So that definitely sucks. And Kevin James, we won't be able to bring back. This team has gotten so expensive, even with the restructures. I guess we'll resign Dan Hill, but even then, we could just have, we have another young linebacker, so I'd rather save that money for something else. And he wasn't like very good last year. So yeah, we'll let him go. We have Jeremy, I can't remember his last name. I'm so bad with the rookie names. And oh yeah, obviously we're gonna be losing JSN too, which sucks, but it is what it is. But let's get into the off season and we'll see if we can hopefully save this team from falling apart too bad. It is still really good though at an 88. Okay, we're trading Redick like our fifth receiver or something. He's already 26 for Aaron Davis, I think his name was. He's a guard from the Jags. Only 23 with a star dev, so we might be able to do something with him. I just wasn't super confident in our offensive line, especially after we lost Braden Smith, so that gives me a little bit more confidence in it, to say the least. And we are trading Jarvis Dyson and a second round pick for Casey, a defensive tackle from the Commanders who is only 24 and has superstar dev. And we're also getting a four and a six. We're kind of scamming and scamming them there. I'm not gonna lie, but we'll take it. Oh yeah, and also Marco Orchard had superstar dev, so <laughs> that's pretty huge too. I don't know how much it's gonna matter in the last year of the rebuild, but you never know, he could develop pretty well. But we'll see if we have any money left. I don't think we do. We have two mil. Is there anything we can do with two mil? Probably not. No, not really. <laughs> so let's get to the draft. Okay, well, finally, a different team has the number one pick. The Rams have it, but we have number 21 and number 27, but I think I know what position I wanna go with here, and that is receiver. It looks like the best one is Joshua Claiborne. Ooh, he looks good. <laughs> Joshua Claiborne out of Texas. He might have normal dev. That's my only concern. A lot of the time, playmakers do seem to have normal for some reason, but he looks good. I'm actually having second thoughts because I did see another first round guy in Mike Moses down here. And I saw there was a speed rusher guy left in Tom Rhodes. Is he that good though? I don't think so. He has a finesse moves, but D play rec, I, I don't know about that. But I mean, we desperately need a speed rusher and we might as well take a chance. I mean, there isn't much for us to add in this draft, really. I don't think Tom Rhodes is that good, I'm not gonna lie, but let's take him. Normal dev, of course. Good speed, good excel. We'll see, he might be okay. You never know, I guess. And do we still get to take that one receiver? Is he still available? No, he's not, unfortunately, but Mike Moses is, so I'm fine with it. <laughs> Let's go with Mike Moses out of Miami. If the other guy was gonna have normal dev, this guy definitely has normal dev. He has the concentration drops. He lacks discipline. He has F injury. Oh, this is a, this is a walking normal dev, but he looks like a good overall player, obviously, so let's take him. Never mind, I don't know anything about dev trait. He has hidden. All right, <laughs> this game's confusing sometimes, but we'll take it. 92 speed, 95 change of direction, 94 excel. Someone was getting like really mad in my comments about me taking like bad injury players because it's always normal dev, but like case in point right there, apparently not. Even with the traits, which I thought were a bigger test, but I think that's all for us to really do here. We don't need another lineman. I don't even know why I'm looking. <laughs> Garrett Hall looks good, but we just don't need any more. We do maybe need another defensive tackle though. Tyler Springs is very strong, 46 reps, 391 pounds. Sure, why not? Only normal dev and only 98 strength. Kind of surprising, but looks good either way. We'll take it. But now I'll see y'all for the draft recap. Okay, well, yeah, that's about what I figured for our first pick. Tom Rhodes is only a 74, but he'll fill a role, so 
I'm I'm fine with that. I that's about what I thought he would be. I was hoping for a dev trait, but unfortunately not. But I didn't expect one necessarily. Another dev trait I didn't expect is Mike Moses. Obviously, he's a 76. He looks really good. 84 spec catch. 92 speed, 94 excel, which didn't he have like 447 speed? Or am I crazy? No, that might have been the other guy. But still, I swear I've gotten like 437 speed guys with like 91 speed or some stupid shit. Whatever. That's fine. At least that guy is good speed. And then Tyler Springs, only a 73. Really disappointed with him, but like, oh well, he'll be depth anyways. And then the CPU didn't really do much. Devin Bone looks good. That's kind of a cool name, especially for a linebacker. But now, let's get into year number 10 of the rebuild. The final year. God, how do people do 20-year rebuilds? I can barely manage a 10. <laughs> but here in the 10th and final year of the rebuild, here's a look at the team. An 88 overall. I think our highest was like a 92, which is obviously very nice. We're still probably close to the best team in the NFL. Maybe the best. I'm not sure, though. But you know, this team kind of still resembles the Colts. We still have Anthony Richardson, Jonathan Taylor, Braden Smith, I mean, that's it, I think, but at least we still have a few. And oh yeah, we did get Brayden Smith back. Nobody signed him, so we just signed him out of free agency. He was just sitting there. We'll try McCain again at left tackle, but again, if he sucks at the midseason, then we'll just bench him for either Davis or Smith or whoever. But we'll also have to see what we can get from Moses as a rookie. Hopefully he can do well. And then the defense... It's mostly the same. We traded for Casey, obviously. Hopefully he can do well. And just hopefully our safeties in general can do better with Copeland and Woods. Both of them were awful last year. Awful doesn't even put it into words. They were like, they played like they're a 61 and a 58 overall, not 91 and 88, which is, I guess, the case for Madden a lot of the time. <laughs> but anyways, let's just get straight to the end of year 10, and hopefully we can finish this rebuild off in a good way. But now that I said that, we are gonna go eight and nine and miss the playoffs. Can't wait. All right, well, here we are at the end of year number 10, and if you've made it all the way here, I just wanna say big thank you for watching all the way here. This has been a marathon, like I said. And of course, be sure to like the video if you for some reason haven't already. It really does help out the channel, even though it sounds stupid. Helps push it to more people. Again, 1,500 likes, and I think I'll do another one of these. And of course, subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. Not this long, but if you like Man Rebuilds, be sure to subscribe and of course turn on notifications if you want to get notified whenever I upload but I'm done plugging this is the team we are a 90 overall and in year number 10 of the rebuild we finished 15 and 2 I thought we had a legit shot to go undefeated I'm not gonna lie we were 7 and 0 at the midseason but we did lose two games in the second half of the year but that's fair oh they were like all close games though for the most part I mean we kind of smoked the Packers and a few teams in there but a lot of them were close but we lost to the Steelers was our first one, and then to the Bengals in week 18. We apparently struggled with that division, I guess. But yeah, I definitely won't complain about going 15 and two. We'll go through the season stats super quick. Anthony Richardson was a monster, 4,900 yards, 42 touchdowns, six interceptions, 77% completion percentage. That is one of the best quarterback seasons I've ever seen in this game. Holy shit. <laughs> 128 passer rating, all right. Jonathan Taylor definitely slowing down, still 1,200 yards, but 4.3 yards per carry is just, it's solid, that's decent. Nine touchdowns though, we'll take that. He, four fumbles too, definitely his worst year so far. He was just good this year. Devontae Smith, 1,350 yards though, 11 touchdowns. Rashawn Rice with 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns. Mike Moses as a rookie, almost 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns. Should be up there for rookie of the year. Jonathan Taylor, 800 yards in the receiving game. Damn, not much for Patton, unfortunately. I've wanted to develop him more. It's just he didn't really get much of an opportunity, but he's still an 81. He's not bad. Tracy McCain at left tackle wasn't great. Even Braden Smith at right tackle wasn't great. We definitely had some underperformers on offense, but I guess players like Anthony Richardson and Devontae Smith definitely carried. Jermaine Cadet led the team with 106 tackles, 130, or er, 132, 102 for Elliott. Tackles for loss, 20 for Sheldon and 10 for Casey. And then sacks, 
14 and a half for DeAndrew Sheldon led the team. We'll take that. Nine for Orchard. We'll take that too. Even six and a half for Tom Rhodes as the number three. As the number three. How did we get so many edge snaps? Oh, I think I played him as like a rotational defensive tackle, which is weird for someone who's 257 pounds, but he was a decent overall there. So I was like, sure, why not? And then we didn't get much pass rush from the defensive tackles at all. Oh my God, dude. F fucking four total interceptions. Two for Roach, one for Copeland, and one for Ray. That part has gotten much worse throughout the rebuild even. At least Woods had a lot of pass deflections, but zero picks. Yikes. <laughs> But MVP goes to Anthony Richardson, another MVP for him. Offensive player of the year goes to Lamar, Richardson at three, Taylor at four. Surprisingly, Devontae Smith all the way down at nine. Defensive player of the year goes to Marvin Dowling. Really? We get beat out by our old player for defensive player of the year. Why wouldn't we? I mean, that happened with Quiddy Pay too, right? Madden's just cursed. Like, legitimately, the team you user is cursed a good amount of the time. But Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Mike Moses. We'll definitely take that. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Tom Rhodes. So we sweep the Rookie of the Year awards. They're not going to matter because we're not going to get the rewards until after the year, but it is what it is. Also, I want to check real quick. I want to see our career combined stats real quick. Anthony Richardson has 43,000 passing yards, 349 touchdowns, and only 107 interceptions. That is like genuine, he's on pace to be like the greatest quarterback ever. And Jonathan Taylor might already be the best running back of all time here. 19,000 yards, 5.4 per carry, 205 touchdowns. Devontae Smith, almost 14,000 receiving yards, 116 touchdowns. Rashawn Rice, 8,800 yards, 85 touchdowns. That's insane. Jermaine Cadet has 1,000 tackles, 54 for loss, 14 and a half sacks. Only two picks though. But I think Jonathan Taylor, yeah, he's the number two all-time rusher now. He would be number one, but Josh Jacobs has 21,000 rushing yards now. All right. But Taylor does have the most touchdowns of all time. Damn, Justin Jefferson and CD Lamb join the all-time receiving yards list at number two and three. And Kelsey up there. And Diggs. Devontae Smith soon to be up there too. This has been a hell of a rebuild. But now let's get into our final games, potentially final game coming up, depending on Madden simulation. But let's get into our final games of the rebuild. In the divisional, we're gonna take on the team that has been probably the worst throughout this rebuild, but they've definitely turned it around in the New England Patriots, but no scenarios here. We're just a straight up better team, five overall better, four wins more. So I can't wait to lose this game, but it's been a fun one. And no, we do win. Okay. <laughs> 35 to 25, it maybe should have been a bigger blowout than that, but at least we do get a win. And now we're going to be taking on the 14 and 3, 88 overall Baltimore Ravens. I would be more understanding if they beat us. Lamar threw one interception on the year. What the hell? Is that like a record for full starting snaps? That has to be. I've never really heard of that. Their defense wasn't very good, but their offense was slightly better than ours. But let's see if we can beat the Ravens here. I don't have much faith for this game, but we'll see. And unfortunately, that's going to do it for the rebuild. As the Ravens upset us 35-17, to they smack us for whatever reason. I love this game. It's great. Super well made. <laughs> but that is going to be the end of today's rebuild. Just look at this team, dude. It is amazing. But again, thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you all enjoyed. If you made it all the way here, you're a real one for that. Again, be sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. But with that, I'm getting out of here, and I will see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.